Hey, what's up, Ecosystem? How you guys doing tonight? It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. I messed up the audio. I'm telling you, I'm having these audio problems tonight. Oh my goodness. Um, I, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I'm live right now. I was trying out a microphone for the show. Um, here, this, I got this microphone, right? I got this microphone and look, my audio, my, the video's gone crazy. The audio's a little crazy. Let me know how the audio is. Um, let's see here. Um, you guys are ready for the memes and we're going to jump into the live chat and stuff, but I'm telling you, the signal has gone crazy tonight. And, um, it all started with, I was getting, I got this microphone and I'm looking at my audio levels over here. Everything looks okay. Um, uh, but I, I don't have the same sound set up. I can't even wear the earbuds cause I can't get rid of this echo. So I get this microphone and I called a company Okay, it's good. Sounds good. The video's good. Oh, thank goodness. I'm telling you. Um, I pr I'm so glad um, because I can't, I can't hear what I can normally hear. But anyways, I get this microphone. This microphone's great. And all the, uh, you see this, the iRig Mic HD2. So I got this microphone because what I want to do is um, when we go, and you know, this isn't even my normal intro. You know, I normally, I say, hello, welcome back to the show. And if this is your first time here, then, you know, please join the live chat. And this is Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. This is the Car Hauling Business Channel. And I'm here every week on Tuesday nights. Can't even figure out if I, if I look into the lens, it looks like I'm looking up. And if I look just below the lens, it seems to be good. So I'm going to look below the lens. And if you guys will tell me, say, hey, go ahead and keep looking below the lens or look at the lens. I don't know which one to do. So anyways, discombobulated and that happens. All right, so it's Tuesday Night's Live, Auto Transport Intel, and this is the Car Hauling Business Channel. And our goal here is to every week talk about all things car hauling. Um, you've got new car shipping customers. You've got auto carriers, auto transport brokers, car hauling dispatchers, lead generators that provide, you know, how do people find car haulers? If you're a new car shipping customer, you don't know where to go. What if you need insurance? What if you're shopping for a truck? What, what if you're looking for a trailer? What if you need to get your BOC3 filed and you want to get set up with the FMCSA and you want to get motor carrier compliant? This is the channel for that. This is the Car Hauling Business Channel. This is Auto Transport Intel. And I welcome you back to the show and I want you to join the live chat. That's what I normally say. But I start talking about this microphone and plus what is this white thing up in the corner? We don't normally see that. Okay, that's my snowball mic. Um, which um, actually somebody let me borrow a couple months ago, which was very nice. It's kind of a backup microphone. And then I showed you a microphone. What's up with that? So at Matt's 2019, which is what I'm gearing up for, and even though it's only February 26th right now, and you're live and welcome back to the show, is that Matt's 2019 takes place in one month. Okay, so in one month, we're going to be live in Louisville, Kentucky at the Mid-America Truck Show. It's only the biggest truck show in the U.S. annually. So, you know, no pressure. All right. So I want to be live at the show. And I'm like, well, 
I know it's going to be live in, or loud in there walking around shooting video. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to get a microphone, get a headset, get a microphone, and that will help me isolate the audio when I'm walking around doing interviews. So I get the microphone and I plug it into my phone and I got an Android phone and this microphone, they told me that I talked to a company and they do a lot of, and it looks like the feed is rolling, so that's good. And hopefully my mouth matches the audio. That's another thing too, is that, um, you know, let me know if actually do my lips match the audio you're hearing because I've been testing for over an hour and I can't get the sound where I want it. Um, so I get the microphone, I plug it into the, to my Android phone. It doesn't work. And I'm like, man, that's a bummer. I got power, but I can't hear anything. And so finally I plug the microphone into my computer, install other software, right? My lips don't match the audio. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's do this. Um, I'm going to start a new Zoom video meeting. Check this out. Let's do, let's go back to this. Let's go do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Because the, the show is all about uh, doing the interviews anyways, right? Okay, so now, how about now? All right, so does my, okay, okay, wait, let me make a about this. Okay, now, is that better? Is the audio, and I might be a little bit loud there, check, one, two, test. Is that better? Oh, the audio and the video is good there? All right, so here's my question, Kimberly. Is the audio and video better now that I'm, uh, using now i'm doing a zoom i'm doing the zoom video meeting audio see anything can happen when you're live especially when you're i mean i'm obsessive about video and audio oh this is better okay all right that's cool all right so what we're no dave says no oh man it's perfect brian says it's perfect. okay i'm gonna go with two out of three all right and actually i like the i like the video screen actually how uh the zoom video meetings uh, incorporates the video, kind of bring, kind of goes into a close-up mode. It's using the um, Logitech uh, camera, and at this point, I don't even think I'm using the audio from the Snowball. I think the audio is purely coming from the uh, Logitech camera. Sounds like I'm in a can. Really, still? Sounds like I'm in a can. Yes, I'm sinking, but it sounds like I'm in a can. Oh man, that's crazy. See. And I can't, I can't even listen to the audio because it's, it's, uh, it's echoing. It's making me crazy. And I call Candy earlier. I'm like, Candy, are you going to be on the show? I'm stressed out. I can't talk. <laughs> Just like meatloaf. All right, that's interesting. Okay, so yeah, I'm stressed about the audio, but I mean, I have to go live. It's eight o'clock. It's Tuesday night. We have a car hauling ecosystem to talk to, and. Uh, we have a trucking industry to talk about, so I mean, we got to go live. So, but it's clear. It sounds like I'm in a can, but it's clear. It's very interesting. It's better than it was. Let me tell you. An hour ago, I was freaking out. I had nothing but terrible echo, and um, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. So, and then, and okay. So now that I've got, I'm in the Zoom meeting. Am I going to be able to do it? Just do your thing. It'll be okay. Now that I'm in my Zoom meeting, am I going to be able to do, uh, oh yeah, I could share the screen so we can still do industry news. I don't even have all the industry news that I normally have. So, all right, but how about this? Let's do this. Let's do, I'm going to share my screen. All right. So now I can kind of go back into me doing my normal thing to some degree, even though I've got this little window here. Oh, there, that's bigger. Okay, so now I'm, I'm in the corner of the screen, and we are back, ladies and gentlemen. So it's kind of like, this is the live show that's, it's in my, in my, these are my inner thoughts, uh, in an exterior fashion. Okay, so let's go into the live chat. Let's just do that. So I want to welcome you guys back to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Sorry for all the monologue and dialogue and exterior thoughts. But, um, you know, we all have things that, you know, made me think about. 
I know as drivers out there, as company owners, you've got a million things on your mind. You're hoping, uh, is this going to go right? Is today's transport going to go okay? What happens if the turbo actually finally does go out? What are we going to do? We've got cars to deliver. We have business to do. So so let's do some business. All right. Hey, M Fields, I'm back at the top of the live chat. M Fields, hey, Jay, what's up? Marcus from Exclusive Luxury Transport in Las Vegas, checking in and watching my favorite show. Thank you so much. Marcus and that means a lot on a night to, like tonight I'm telling you man thank you so much I really appreciate it um, it means a lot to have you guys here with me even though you know I'm kind of going through you know Scotty the engineer we're getting the ship is being attacked we're, we're taking on lasers um, Bill of Bad Apples is here what's up Bill what's up welcome back to the show Bill really appreciate you tuning back in and Candy at Jacksport see she gave me a super chat trying to help me calm down a little bit. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Um, and, um, you know, what's interesting is with me still trying to do everything personally, trying to get it all done, um, I think I'm, you know, I'm a little frazzled. I'm a little overwhelmed trying to, you know, try out new audio and video gear and I do the phone calls, trying to set up next week's show and all the networking that goes into it. So it means a lot, Candy. Thank you for your contribution. I really appreciate it. Truckify is up. What's up, Jay? Truckify car hauling app is here always. We love your show, buddy. Really appreciate that. I do believe, if I'm correct, Truckify, you're going to be on the show in two weeks. If you could verify that, hey, why not? Let's do that. I think that is March. I want to say March 12th. I don't have my calendar in front of me, but I think that is March 12th. So looking forward to, uh, man, we are, as we crank towards mats, just trying to pack in the interviews with all the uh, possible ways you can go and do business in car hauling and services. Trucking answers, ready for the memes. Cool, man. You know what? I didn't get as many memes this week. The Facebook seemed to be full. Of, there was a lot of information that mean weather and um, political stuff. And, I, I, you know, you guys know the weather. And I don't do politics on the show. So uh, industry news isn't very, I don't I think I have like 10 images so i'm ready for the memes if you got memes you want to share on my show stay out of facebook jail give me your memes and let's do this thing autotransportintel at gmail.com you send me your memes and i appreciate it hey what's up brian hello jay happy tuesday life is good sounds good video is good i appreciate that brian and i appreciate you sent me an email you wanted to get in contact and i had to send you over to ty i just did not have time in fact, I responded to some emails while I was prepping for the show today. I'm sorry for being late on email replies, but we really do. We want to hear from you, and we want to help you. And I know, man, Ty needs to clone himself quick. So I think he's working on that. I think we got a hold of a cloning machine. Leyland Lucero. Hey, what's up, Leyland? Thanks for tuning into the show. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Uh, Dave Williams, hello, radio. What's up, Dave? Good to have you on. In fact, um, Dave, I think you're going to be on in two weeks, if I'm right. Um, so we'll, we'll get some verification on that. Just look at the camera and just and stop worrying. I know, man. I think about, I'm telling you, I'm thinking about the background and the, and the images and the audio and the video and the switching and the text and the commercials. There's just a lot to it. So I know need to just calm down but but i do as soon as i hit that start streaming button um you know we're back we're live and we're just we're going to do this thing so but i i don't want to make you listen to terrible staticky audio breaking up and xlr cables going everywhere i just don't want to do it so yeah blue snowball represent in fact uh it's the what is it the blue snow shadow there's another microphone that i'm looking at um and if i knew the name of it that'd be great so let's see, audio and video is good here. All right, awesome. Hey, that's Richard from Shore Dispatch. Um, if you need a dispatcher, Richard's available. And so uh, Shore Dispatch checked it out. And really, uh, you can contact him. Richard, if you want to share your email, go ahead and do that. I can always, you can send it to me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Make sure you tell him that ATI sent you. 
Uh, so let's see. We did some audio and video checks. Sounds like I'm in a can. Just like meatloaf, do your thing. Johnson Transport Management. What's up, Johnston Transport Management? I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning into the show. I really appreciate that. Um, we're going to talk some, uh, we're going to talk to Car Delivery Network tonight. That's the interview tonight. Um, what I didn't do is, I didn't give this show lineup, although I'll just tell it to you now. So at 8.45 in about a half hour, we're going to bring in Derek from CDN Car Delivery Network. We're going to talk about the industry, finished vehicle logistics, OEM, BOL, EPOD and uh, car hauling software industry stuff. So we're going to do that with Car Delivery Network. That's in about a half hour. And then the live panel, the CDN live panel, we're going to bring in Ty, we're going to bring in Candy, and we're going to bring in Ron of Traffic Inc. And Candy was here last week with Jacksport Transport and Storage, or Jacksport Storage, and Ron is with NYC Traffic Inc. So um, both of them have obviously been on the show before, so we're going to do that. Two out of three ain't bad, let me tell you, man. Um, I'm watching, making sure my levels don't fall off over here. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm obsessed with the video, dude. Hey, what's up? Matt from Anytime Towing Vermont is with us. Cool, man. Thanks for tuning in. And what's going on with the weather? Are we in for more snow again? It seems like it. Uh, Angel Alvarado. Hey, what's up, Angel? Thanks for tuning into the show. I appreciate it. What is CDN, Ty? It's such a good question. CDN is Car Delivery Network. What is Car Delivery Network? Well, we're going to talk about it. What is Car Delivery Network? Uh, headed to my shop, work on my trucks, listen to Auto Transport Intel. No snow tonight. All right, I know that affects business up there, or does it? I'm sure it's still busy. You know, people still need... When it's really bad snow and really bad weather, you see cars conked out on the side of the road. And I know in Kansas City, man, the potholes are growing like crazy. Uh, but even in, when the weather's pretty cold, right... Still, somebody's car won't start, or, you know, the starter goes out, or there's all kinds of problems. So, I know Matt, at any time towing Vermont, he stays pretty busy. Yes, March 12th, Jay, we're excited to show our technology. All right, cool. All right, so we got Truckify on March 12th. That's two weeks from tonight. And um, Dave, I plan on having Dave on that night as well. Um, it's okay. Ty was a good substitute. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate that. He is a good substitute. Maybe a better substitute. Honestly, if you want to talk about trucks and trailers and learning everything in the transport parking lot, you want to talk to Ty. That's right. Ty at CTS. Go to ctsbusinesscoaching.com and talk to my business partner, Ty. Seven Seas Transport. This is the year I start car hauling. For myself, ready to learn, feed me to the knowledge. Is Raleigh, North Carolina usually a good market? Actually, North Carolina is pretty busy. Um, not to say that you know that you can't do it. North Carolina is busy, though. I don't know if it's because they're in the middle of the I-95 corridor before between Jersey and Florida. But I mean, I know you know if one out of twenty car haulers that I've talked to as a dispatcher are either in the Carolinas or Georgia, or Florida, it is, it's a busy area, so you just have to make sure you know what you're getting into, and that's where I think uh, coaching with Ty at CTS is definitely going to help you, you're going to want to do that, how do you get a hold of us, you know you can email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com, or go to ctsbusinesscoaching.com, let's pull that up, let's go to yeah, so there you go, ctstransportbusinesscoaching.com. And if you haven't been there yet, you're just going to go to the site, and you're going to scroll down. And there's there's Ty's phone number. You can call Ty. You could call Ty right now. Um, he's going to be on the show later, so don't keep him too long. But set up an appointment. You know, read a talk about, I wrote this, okay? I wrote this from the point of view of, I've talked to a lot of new car haulers that, you know, maybe they've met somebody rich at a truck stop that's like, oh, man, it's easy peasy. You can haul, like, junk scrap metal for, like, five grand a day. That guy still, you know, he's still out there telling stories about how easy it is. Well, it's not easy. And um, I got to hear Ty on the phone today, actually, with somebody that was, you know, reluctant to, to listen to some of the hard information. So 
Check out our site, give Ty a call, set up a coaching session. We want to make sure that you know what you're getting into and that you have all the information before you start pulling the triggers because you want to do it in the right order. Uh, and that includes the starter kit. Oh man, you want to get in on the starter kit. Okay, so we got, oh, okay, so we got shortdispatchmd at gmail.com. That's Richard's email address. There's Richard's phone number. Again, if you're looking for dispatching, you can contact Richard at Shore Dispatch. And then Keenan says, Carling and Freight Dispatcher will be here all night. Keymore6 at gmail.com. And there's a phone number. Wow. Gelling big right now. Cool, man. That's cool. So there you go. I mean, you've got some leads right there. And that's also a big part of the show. If you guys, I think I think most of the people with us tonight have been here before. But if you are new to the show and you're just, you know, you're not live chatting, you're just kind of watching and listening, or maybe you're watching this after the fact, uh, we're all, you know, very into sharing information. So if you live chat a question, or mix mix. We haven't talked about mix mix in a long time. Um, if you are, uh, if you have a question, if you leave a question on the, uh, on the website, I want to help you get it answered. Um, actually I was, I was looking at, I had a, uh, there was a question about brokers. This was a really good question. Um, recently on the show, let's see, if you go to, if you go to the show, here's the, uh, here's the YouTube site. So, you know, if you go to the YouTube channel, right, you're there right now. But if you, after the show, if you go to the YouTube channel, check out some of the videos and read some of the comments. Um, and there's some really good questions and comments. And one was a good question about brokers. I mean, how much are brokers, you know, what are they taking? You know, what, what should we know? All right, what do we need to know as far as what brokers are taking? And... Um, Okay, as a percentage. All right, so a car shipping customer, they decide, all right, I'm going to move my, I'm going to move my Chevy Cruze from Los Angeles to New Jersey, and what, you know, what, what should I pay? What should I expect as a quote? And they don't know all the mechanics. All they know is they want to move their car, and they know that they want the cheapest rate. So they get a quote of say fifteen hundred. Okay, and the the quote is fifteen hundred to move their Chevy Cruze from L.A. to New Jersey. And when the broker posts it on the load board, what are they going to post it for? Clearly, not they're not going to post it for fifteen hundred because they wouldn't make any money, and they deserve to make some money. Will they post it for a thousand? And therefore, you know, they're trying to keep thirty-three percent of the gross revenue. Maybe, maybe. Actually, that fits in with what I think. I estimated on uh, in my YouTube comment that I think brokers are trying to keep between 20 to 40 percent of the car shipping customers quote now i think that's high but i think that that's what's going on uh as far as posting on a load board now let's say uh let's say that car shipping broker knows the carrier and it's somebody they trust somebody that they like and they don't post it on the load board yet all right they're just gonna uh they're just gonna call the carrier and say hey will you move this car and the carrier says, uh, yeah, we'll move it for 1200 okay? And the broker says, what if the broker says, okay, all right? So they get 300 out of 1500 That's still a 20% commission. That's, that's pretty decent, I think. Um, a $300 commission for connecting a car shipping customer to a carrier? Will the carrier ask for more? Will the carrier say, oh, we'll do it for 1500 The broker says, I can't do it for 1500 I'm all in at 1500 all right, well, then we'll do it for $1,400. Will the broker take a $100 broker fee? Now, $100 out of a $1,500 quote, that is, okay, that's less than 10%, right? $150 would be 10%. Would a broker do it for less than 10%? Not many. Um, a 10% would be $150, and I think, um, I think there are, are several of my broker friends that would say that's fair. Although a 10% broker fee in car shipping can still be a little bit low. Now, do you guys think about all these parts when you when you negotiate a price? Because I, here's the problem. I think that as a dispatcher, when I started, I, didn't, I wasn't thinking about all this. I wasn't thinking about what the car shipping customer thinks their quote is. I wasn't thinking about what the broker is trying to make. I wasn't even actually thinking about what's the break-even point 
for the carrier I'm working for. I was thinking, can I get more money based on the posted load rate, right? I'm looking at, because, okay, when I was a new dispatcher, where did I get cars to book for drivers? I went to Central Dispatch. That's where everybody seems to go, Central Dispatch, right? How many load boards do you need? You hear the answer, one, and that is Central Dispatch. So you go to Central Dispatch, you see the Chevy Cruze posted from Los Angeles to Jersey, and it's posted for 900 And I'm like, oh, man. Chevy Cruze, what else can I fit with it? I'm already thinking about what else can I fit with it? When are we going to be empty in Los Angeles? I see 900 I'm, and I'm thinking, oh man, I wonder if that broker would be nice enough to give me 1000 Meanwhile, the broker's thinking, man, I'm going to keep 500 if I'm nice enough to give them 1000 And this is the stuff going on, right? Um, anytime says, seems accurate. I was quoted 2000 for my loader. Shipper got 1200 I tried to avoid a broker on a Facebook page, but they are all over that stuff. Pull Dog is in the house. What's up, Chris at Pull Dog? It's true. It's very interesting how, uh, and this is where anytime, if anyone asks me about brokers or loads posted, anything like that, I, I'm saying this. Always add more money to whatever, whatever you see that load posted at. Don't be thinking... Oh, I hope I can get an extra 50 bucks. What you should be thinking is, what's the shipper paying? What's the shipper really paying to move this car? Is the shipper really paying 40 cents a mile? No, they're not. They're not. No sh no ship, no broker. I hope this is true. And if it's not true, I know somebody will let me know with a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a comment. But um, if, if a shipper, if a broker... And remember, a shipper is a customer, okay? And the broker is the person talking to the customer shipper and the carrier or the dispatcher, all right? So if you want to think of it like offense and defense, on the defense, you got the carrier and the dispatcher. And on the offense, you got the shipper and the broker, all right? And uh, the broker knows when they talk to the customer, the shipper, that they're, they're probably trying to get closer to a dollar a mile on a car. And that's open transport. Enclosed transport, it's about two and a half times. I'd say 250% of whatever the going rate was on open. So if you think 250% on an open transport, if it was 1500 for that Chevy Cruze, double it to three grand, and then add another 50%. Start at four grand. For an enclosed, now no one's going to pay that on a Chevy Cruze, but and that's why you wouldn't ship in a Chevy Cruze enclosed. There's no reason to do that unless you just love that thing and you, you know, painted it and you know whatever. But um, like hand painted it with you know henna tattoos and whatnot. But if it's a Hellcat, all right, and it's got low clearance and all this stuff, yeah, and the amazing wrapper and you just love this thing. Go in enclosed rate is 250 percent of a going open transport rate i would quote that hellcat at four grand now here's the problem there are so many other brokers that you got to start to immediately lowball to get that customer because if you if you constantly if you're a broker and you're always telling car shipping customers what they really should pay you're probably not going to get many customers because customers went to google and typed in cheap car shipping right because everybody wants everything cheap and we know from car subscription models that are coming car buying subscription models i don't know if anybody uses one now it's not very common but if you're using a car subscription model not only do you want the lowest price ever but then you want a different color every month and you want it to magically appear you know while you're still at the hair appointment so you know, that's going to be another issue, which I, I'm really looking forward to. One of the things we're pushing for is getting um, car buying subscription model guests on this show to find out what are you thinking. Okay, I'm talking about, all right, the car commercials where you've got easy peasy flatbed 
pulls up in front of the customer's house, which by the way, you never see the driver get out. You never see the driver in this commercial. You just see easy peasy flatbed pull up and the customers come skipping out of their house. I don't even think they have to get out of the house. They, they're skipping around in their bedroom and their bathroom and they, they stick the car through the mail slot or, or whatever they're gonna have in the future. And, uh, but no one talks about, how, okay, wait, how did the car get there? How often does the car to the does the car carrier have to come to this house to fulfill this customer's promises and guarantees and expectations? We already know, with transport as the way it is just now, that there are brokers that are guaranteeing VIP, easy peasy, door to door, um, have it the way you want it. You know, um, all the all these guarantees and promises. You think that's crazy now. Wait until you add the car buying subscription models where you can have a different car every month. And by the way, what happens to all the people that work in the office that are trying to manage all the paperwork for this car? I'm telling you, it's going to get insane. I'm so excited to see the insanity and, and just to bring it to you live on this show as if it wasn't crazy enough already. Um, do I need factoring for a new company? All right, what is factoring? Okay, so factoring is, uh, you don't need factoring unless you need factoring, but let me tell you, you don't want factoring, all right? You already, how do you like credit card fees? You like those? How do you like bank fees? Do you, don't you have a checking account with free checking? Do you like paying interest? Do you like ATM fees? Who likes to go, you ever been to a casino and you need to use the ATM? That's a gamble right there because you just lost half your money. They just kept half. Okay, it seems like half. Um, and then the other half is gone at the roulette table. But do you like being feed to death? It brings us back to the mix mix. Because listen, if you like paying fees, you're going to love factoring. All right? Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm running the ad right now. But I will say this is that um, I did talk to I talked to a company. You know, in car hauling, there's not actually factoring companies work with trucking companies and not necessarily car hauling companies. Car hauling is a little high risk for factoring companies. Even they think it's high risk. Well, what is factoring? All right, well, listen, if you've agreed to a 30-day pay and that's your whole load and your ball of wax, you filled your trailer with one broker, it was one pickup, one delivery, easy peasy, except it's a 30-day pay. And that's 30 days after they admit they received your fax bill of lading and invoice. So now it's 60 days. Can you and your business wait 60 days to refill your gas tank? No, you can't. So how are you going to get your money? Ah, factoring. Okay. So factoring is a company that will front you the money. They're also known in the normal world. I mean, you know, you've heard of payday loans. It's like that. All right. So you can have your money now. And when your check comes in and that co the factoring company is going to hound your check, they're going to hound the company that is, should be paying you, but is now paying the factoring company. The factoring com company is going to give you money now, but they're only going to give you about 90% of that check. So they're going to keep 10% to do the legwork to actually collect the check. Now, is it 90%? Is it 95%? Is it 85%? But wait, there's more. Because many factoring companies have a minimum that you have to factor every month and... There's a length of the contract, which could be two to three years. So you got two to three years with a minimum amount you have to factor. And in fact, I think also some contracts want you to factor literally everything during that two to three year period. So for the next two to three years, you're only going to get about 85% of your money. That's before the government gets a hold of you and takes the taxes. So if you like fees, you're going to love factoring. I hope that helps. And I, you know, I have no idea how I'm going to ever, I want to, I would like to make a relationship with a factoring company for the cases where it makes sense. But based on what I just said, I don't know how that's ever going to happen. But it could. It could. Because you know what? You know what companies are looking for? They're looking for traffic, views, hits, uh, demographics. Shoot, man, half the time they don't even care what you say. Have you guys ever watched Bill Handel? Bill Handel, Handel on the Law, he talks crazy and has all kinds of advertisers. So I can't focus on that. 
Uh, seven seas. Raleigh is a great area in North Carolina. It's all good. That's what you choose to believe perspective. And you know what? I agree with you, Candy. That's a good point. That's kind of why I don't want to discourage anybody, but I do want to point out the information. I mean, the one thing I got is information. And, um, you know, I'm kind of saying it like it is. Carrier got 1,200 is what I meant. Right. Out of the 2,000. And that's before factoring. Mix, mix memories. Yeah, I love the mix, mix. Oh, man, I'm telling you. Yeah, I do love the mix, mix. Um, actually, I hate the mix, mix. Um, because I don't know what it is. And if you get the mix, mix with the 10% comm check fee. Did you guys know that a comm check fee? I, I asked comm data. And a comm check is normally just a $10 fee. Just a flat $10 fee. So if you're facing a 10% carrier rate comm check fee, 10% is way different than $10. So if, if it's a $1,000 load and you're getting charged a 10% comm check fee, okay, that's $90 that you should have been able to keep. Why? I mean, why? You know, so if you, let's do, if you do the, let's say you do the 10% comm check fee, plus you do the factoring, and then you're a 1099 employee. I don't know if you get to keep any money, actually. I, th I think at that point, you've just given it all away. Uh, let's see here. Let's do some industry news. Um, and I don't know why I went into that kind of spiel, but I had to do something. All right. Let's see here. Industry news. Okay. Uh, you can't see that. Let's do that. Yeah, we don't, and we don't have the handy industry news graphic right now because, uh, whoa. Okay, wait a minute. That's kind of crazy. We'll do that. Okay, so this is, uh, yeah, this is off Facebook. Let's see here. We do black on a horizontal bar. Okay, why did the cops pull you over? And the answer is because you are a sweet driver. Oh, okay, I had to clean it up again. I had to clean that up for Facebook. Always doing that. Let's see what else we got here. Um, let's see here. Can I get to... Is it going to let me... I'm telling you, the whole thing is going crazy. Oh, there we go. If you ride... Oh, yeah, dude, this is me. Listen, if you ride my bumper, then we were... Whatever speed we were doing, we're going to do 20 miles less. So if you if you like riding my tail, get ready to be there a while. <laughs> it's the truth, man. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Complains about all the semi trucks on the morning commute. Orders from Amazon. I think it should be daily, right? You know, you, do you guys think about that? I mean, you know, once you get past, you know, what's happening with the rate and the tax dollars, etc. You start to think about, you're sitting in traffic, you know, all right, who here ordered this car? Because if nobody lets me over, somebody's not getting their car today, right? On their way to their hair appointment. Uh, waiting for carriers to respond to the 75 cents a mile load you offered. Now, what's funny is, all right, see, in car hauling, if you're in the Midwest and it's posted for 75 cents a mile, that thing's going to fly off the shelf. But if you're a freight hauler and your whole truckload is going to be 75 cents a mile, it's going to sit there a while and then someone's going to make a portrait of you and put it on the wall. That's how long you're going to be sitting there. Um, <laughs> how life is going right now. This pretty much sums it up for my audio. You got the driver, the broker, and the shipper. <laughs> Oh my god, that is so crazy. This is a family show. <laughs> oh man, maybe the best meme. Oh, it's <laughs> the meme is so good, it came back. That is crazy. Handles in the Broadcasting Hall of Fame. He should be. He is amazing. Bill Handles crazy. Okay. New Jersey Turnpike Service Area ex, ex, uh, 
Uh, exit 8 North Rest Area, no idling zone. All the trucks that were idle at night got tickets. This is crazy. I mean, really? Like, I don't understand. I, I, I really don't get it. I don't, I don't understand no idling laws. Like, don't all vehicles idle at some point? I mean, I guess, okay, right. I'm dri Let's say I'm driving to the store. I don't put it in neutral and I don't idle. But we're not talking about me. We're talking about trucks. We're talking about trucks across the country. And isn't, I mean, I'm assuming idling is a normal part of driving. Like, it, would that be like, I don't know. No... I don't know. You can't, let's say, what if they said in a parking lot, you can't use neutral in a parking lot. You just have to jam it from drive to reverse. Just jam it. You just need, you need to, you really need to jam it. Like now. I, I don't know. I don't get it. I really don't get it. And it only seems to be getting worse. And, oh, by the way, I, there's a new story um, in one of the trade magazines about um, that the FMC, there may be, they may be like repealing the ELD mandate for small carriers, dude, don't buy into it, please. Don't buy into that. That's not true. You think the ELD is going to go backwards? Why would it? They got it. They slipped it through, man. You know, there's a reason the ELD mandate happened. Do you know that the ELD mandate, they started working on that like 15 years ago. Did you know that? It's not like it just happened. They worked so long to slide this in. Why do you think we're all wrapped up in trivial daily news about like what, you know, what uh, the Kardashians are up to or, you know, this this these are distractions from the from what's really important. And the FM they slid the FMCSA through. It's like deflate gate. It happened. Live with it. Okay? So, I mean, the ELD's not going anywhere. And that's why, you know, I don't know what you do. I don't know what you do. I don't know what you do about idling laws. They got the idling laws in. Touchdown. I don't know. I can't I can't figure it out. Why is this still happening? How do you not know that bridge after bridge, day after day, we see these car haulers trapped under bridges. I, I just don't get it. I really don't get it. Did you not know? That, 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 that's not going to fit. It is Kool-Aid time, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Coast, uh, yeah, this is my, you guys know. You guys do know about ELD Kool-Aid, super safe, super Kool-Aid. Because I'm telling you, yeah, man. You, if you think ELD's getting repealed, oh, it's time to drink the Kool-Aid, I'm telling you. You better get on board. And if you are you, if, are you you are you still using hockey puck ELD? Man, get rid of that stuff. Get an ELD that works. Uh, I've got that actually in the. Uh, you can see that in the scroll below. Um, you can go to Fleet Shield forward slash ATI. Get an ELD that works. There's a lot of ELD. There's like 200 plus ELDs. Don't think that you got to get the ELD that matches your socks. Okay, you don't. You don't need to do that. Get an ELD that works. Get an ELD from a company that focuses on ELD, okay? You, this isn't the dollar store, okay? Don't do not do that. I don't, understand, I don't even understand that, okay? Uh, oh, and this is, here's, I think this is, oh, I got one more after this? The studio says, oh, the studio engineer says I got one more after this. There's no studio engineer. <laughs> okay, you're looking at him. All right, so I saw this. Somebody sent me this, and I like it when people send me their, uh, you know, images of stuff they saw. This is, that's pretty cool. That's a, uh, that's a raptor. And, uh, that, man, if the raptors get any bigger, they're going to get stuck under bridges. In fact, I heard, this makes no sense. Texas has a lot of low bridges. Texas? Man, you guys got a 64-ounce steak, and you got low bridges? Yeah, I don't get it. Oh hey, if you can if you can like screenshot the the monitor and then like coupon clip that out, you can get some uh, blinker fluid. So I don't know, Do, I don't know. See if you can figure that out. Free blinker fluid. I found this on Facebook. I'm sharing it now. Just I think you know, bring your phone in. Maybe they can scan that. That might work. That should work. 
That could work. All right, so we're at about 45 minutes. I managed to get there somehow. Let's see what else we got. Uh, oh, Bill says it's all about the money they're making off them. Oh, yeah, dude, ELDs aren't going away, dude. dude oh, I need to get my Kool-Aid. I'm telling you, man. You better drink the Kool-Aid. You better get on board. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss out on this. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Weiner Enterprise. Let's see. Skeezer, National, Swifty, Pushed, ELD. Okay, I mean, there's all kinds of ELDs. Y yeah. Okay, check, check. Okay, so I can hear myself. And forget he wasn't driving his Civic. <laughs> Uh, hey, the one and only is with us. Hey, welcome back, one and only. I appreciate you joining the show. All right, so listen, we are going to um, we're going to uh, bring in uh, Derek with Car Delivery Network. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to run an ad for you because listen, if you if you need insurance, you need car hauling insurance. What are you going to just drive your truck and trailer and have no insurance? Are you serious? No, you're not serious. Nobody does that. So where do you go for insurance? What do you do? Check it out. Pelican Trucking Insurance. Hey guys, Jay at Auto Transport Intel here. Listen, you know that if you're a new car hauler, you're looking for insurance. You've got your equipment. It's time to get insurance so that you can begin the process of getting towards hauling cars. So where do you go? What do you do? When you need insurance, who can you talk to? Well, head on over to Pelican Trucking Insurance and you want to talk to Sam. Now, Sam is a friend of the show. And again, it's PelicanTruckingINS.com, Pelican Trucking Insurance. Go to the webpage, scroll down, you'll find the phone number. There's a phone number, 225-308-9882. You can talk to Sam Farr. Now, it's sfarr at lemoineinsurance.com, but he is with Pelican Trucking Insurance, and he wants to answer your questions. He wants to talk to new car haulers. He wants to talk to established car haulers too that are looking for a better rate. If you're unhappy with your insurance rate or you don't have a quote yet and you need a new insurance quote, head on over to Pelican Trucking Insurance, PelicanTruckingINS.com. Ask for Sam Farr. You can send him an email, put in a phone call. And again, you're looking for an insurance agent you can get on the phone, you can talk to, you can get advice from. What kind of a deductible do you need? How much insurance do you need per vehicle? What about automotive liability insurance? It's your liability and your cargo, that's what you need. So you can get on the road hauling cars, get set up with the brokers, on the load boards, or if you're talking to a dealership direct, they're gonna ask about your insurance. So go ahead and talk to Pelican Trucking Insurance, ask for Sam, I know he wants to talk to you. Again, here's his phone number, I'm gonna scroll down on the page, PelicanTruckingINS.com, call Sam, 225-308-9882, send him an email, sfar at lemoineinsurance.com. You can also find him on Facebook and Instagram, and he's waiting for your call. I'm Jay at Auto Transport Intel, and I approve this message. Okay, so we're back. All right. Okay, so Derek is with me. Now, Derek, you can hear me okay, right? Okay, awesome. All right, so now, Derek, you're with Car Delivery Network CDN, right? So tell me, what is Car Delivery Network, please? We are a software company that um, is based in the UK, so all of our... Uh, software is built in-house over in the UK. That's where the company basically started and, and, and came about. And um, then about, I don't know, five, six years ago, um, me and my dad owned an auto transport company and we were seeking auto transport software solutions to grow our company. 
and uh, came across CDN on the internet, shot an email to those guys and asked them, you know, just general questions about the software. Um, and uh, one of the founders contacted us back. And about two weeks later, they were sitting on our front door of our office. Um, and so once wow. they came in and yeah, yeah, once they came in and, uh, and really started showing us the software and what it could do and um, telling us their vision for the industry, um, I, we bought into it, um, hook, line and sinker. And the one reason was, Jay, is because I was a carrier and they were for the carrier. And I thought, man, they are going to revolutionize this industry. They're going to help the industry. They're going to do, a, I mean, they were just there to help. And um, I thought, man, I can do so much more for the industry on their side of the ball game than I could on, on my side as a carrier. And so they eventually offered me a job and I became a part owner of the company eventually. And so, I basically awesome. run the U.S. now here in, out of Texas. So. Yep. Yes. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, once you can actually use it, who, who's your biggest fan? the people that are using it and know it and they see the benefit of it. So, right. I mean, so, oh man, I'm getting this audio. Yeah. To see this. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. that's, Just, that's why you're the pro. That's why we like you, Jay. That's why we listen to you. So, <laughs> you do it. And, okay, so, and when I do that, okay, so this is interesting. If I mute that audio, yeah. okay, then it gets rid of your audio. So when you, okay, so when you talk, here's what we got to do. When you talk, I need to put the earbud in. And when <laughs> I talk, I got to take it out. How's that? That's what I've got to do. That's going to be tough. You know what? But I'm going to I'm going to wing it because uh, I don't I really have any other choice. And we're going to move on. But I mean, I just I wanted to I wanted to bring these things up because I'm trying to. But it's man, the live chat's going crazy with Isn't you know it? what's happening. All right, so I want to I want to get back on track. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the industry in general. Okay. Okay. Me like, too. here's a question for you: How many? I made a list of I made a list of questions. How many vehicles are delivered in the new car space? Because you guys do a lot of new car, OEM, car hauling, service, and finished vehicle logistics, right? Yeah, that that's pretty much where we um, where we cut our teeth is in the new car space. We came over here um, with ePod when ePod wasn't nobody even knew what ePod was. What what is ePod exactly? Yeah, electronic proof of delivery, um, but. These carriers, I mean, they literally, you think ELD was bad. These carriers literally hated us because the, the OEMs were mandating for them to use ELD. And one of the OEMs right. that we were working closely with said, CDN, we're just going to mandate them all to use you. And we're like, no, please don't do that. That, that you know, Let them just mandate that they want, that they get all the delivery data back uh, and, electronically. And why were they doing, why would, why create that mandate? Why would they do that? Well, to get rid of the paper, the, the paper delivery receipts and, and the OEM can get the delivery data quicker. And right. And efficiently, so, so it's can, efficiency, accuracies in there too, right? Yeah. The damage, the, the damage codes, the photos, they wanted all that data. I mean, it's all about data. That's right. Really? We hear about that, right? Yeah. That's right. And so, but in OEM, 
and we were talking about this last week, when it comes to damage codes and the vehicle inspections, I mean, it's a much larger process requiring a higher degree of accuracy, higher standards. And it's it's a different process, isn't it? I mean, it's a car hauler. Yeah, I mean, they're they're the AIAG codes there that that kind of differentiate the, the new and the used markets. But, I mean, at the end of the day, Those, you know, your audience, the guys that are out there hauling, you know, for whoever and for dealers and auctions and all the used car stuff, they're just covering their tail, you know, and that's that's basically the the, the AIG codes are just a standard way to send that data back into the OEM. It's it's all again, it's just about the data and the OEMs. If if there's a certain level of damage or issues they, they won't they don't want the car transported right yeah there are yeah each oem has their own specifications as to you know how much damage can be on a car at origin um and if it's got you know most of the time it's it's a level two a severity so okay. you have like uh five levels of severity and then six would be a missing um so and yeah. it's it seems to me that, I mean, that presents a whole nother level of problems. If you're a car carrier and suddenly you don't get to take two cars because of the damage codes, that, I mean, you didn't damage it. It's right. damaged. Now you got two spaces. What happens now? Uh, generally, you've got a whole lot of cars standing back there, sitting back there behind you that, you know, you make a phone call and they replace them pretty quick. Okay. So you count on that as an OEM car hauler from there. Right. Well, I mean, it's all about the velocity of getting those vehicles out of that, out of the facility, out of the railhead, out of the plant. The vehicles have to move. That's the one, um, the the big no no in in this side of the industry is is slowing down that velocity of vehicles moving out to that sell point because that's where the cash is at, at the sell of the vehicle, right? Velocity. Velocity. Nobody has ever brought up velocity on this show. What's velocity? Uh, it's the rate uh, in the market that the vehicles churn from cradle to grave, the, the dealership. The cradle being the plant and the grave being the, the dealership where they're sold. Plant to dealership. And this gets into, I mean, this is what dealers are worried about, is the churn on their lot, right? How long does it take to... Turnover Every, inventory. Yeah, everybody's worried about the churn on the the the, OE, the the manufacturers worried about the churn coming out of the plant. The they're also worried about and the rail the railroads are concerned about the churn in the in the yards, and the OEM worries about that because that's how the the rail the rail yards are making money is on the storage of the vehicles. So if they're there for too many days, they start incurring storage against them. Sounds like an auction. Well, yeah, and then the OEM also charges the carrier back if he doesn't meet SLAs and getting those vehicles to delivery on time. So, right, okay. Now, this is, I mean, we don't talk about this stuff in used car hauling, right? This is right. This is new car hauling world concerns. Right. right. Okay, yeah. this is good information. That's why you're here. That's why I want to talk about the industry and get some of the information about, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you wouldn't know just by staring at Central Dispatch and getting your feet wet in car hauling. No, not at all. And, that, and you know, you mentioned Central Dispatch and, and the used car. That's where I started. I mean, we were, we were running cars back and forth from repo lots to auctions. I lived through the, through the auction transport days, through the remarketing service days, the UPS and then finally the ready auto transport that came into Mannheim's and you know about the ready time when ready came in we were i was pretty full on in cdn at that point in time so but yeah it's a total different yeah, animal that's a while really. ago yeah i mean yeah. you talk about what what's the year on that oh god 20 uh i don't know 2014 okay. maybe i was going to guess 2013 yeah something like that okay because that, as long as I've been dispatching, Ready Auto's been there. Which, by the way, um, just talk about Ready Auto for a second. And this is an example of how things can change. I was talking to a dispatcher just the other day, um, Alexandrina. Okay, she's a dispatcher, 
and she was talking about how Ready Auto, I don't think they're taking new carriers right now. Have you heard this? Wow. Really? I haven't heard that. If you... If you're having an issue right now, if you're watching the show right now, and you're having an issue getting signed up with Ready Auto, I want to hear about it. Yeah, it's happening. There's like, <laughs> they're saying that, uh, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but it's like, if, you, if you're if you in an area that's really common, busy, competitive, they're not going to add you because they don't need you on that lane. It's already busy enough. I've never heard of that. Like, why would... Why would a you know a broker or load board in this case they're both exclude you as a carrier from being in their network because they say they're already too busy on that route? I've never heard of that because that that's totally opposite that's, that to what's happening on the new car side. The new car side, they can't get enough drivers. They they need capacity. There's a shortage of capacity out there on the new car side. And it's okay. crazy. It just makes me wonder what's going on, what factor out there in the industry is going on to create that dynamic that would be totally opposite where they would not need capacity in a, in a lane. Totally. I've never heard of this before. Unless they're losing market share somehow. Right? I don't know. I mean, so now that I've said that, if you see something or hear that... Yeah, Ready Auto, if you can confirm or deny this rumor, let me know, because I, I, don't, I don't understand it. So does that mean the brick-and-mortar auctions are going away, and, and they're starting to have all these online auctions now, and, and the buyers and sellers are working out their own transportation on the online online auctions? Sounds to me like you know something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's just a guess. <laughs> well, Car Lots is a company name that I saw in the news recently right. uh, where a lot of folks are, are looking at different ways of disrupting the industry, doing it differently. I have read that instead of sending a car to the auction and back to the remarketer and back to the auction three or four times, yeah, they're looking to disrupt that process, which that's going to affect some carriers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And technology is, I mean, you hear it, the cliche, technology's advancing. It's changing every day. Brick and mortar, you know, I don't know. Brick and mortar auctions might be. But that's what, while we don't want to scare anybody, right? Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean but at the same time, and I, I made a Facebook, a Facebook post about this. It's not that I do or you got some Kool-Aid there. You get some ELD Kool-Aid. That's awesome, man. Hey, cheers to the, you know, if you have an ELD that you love, then cheers to you because I, I don't know. I don't think everybody loves their ELD. Nobody loves their ELD. Oh. <laughs> I don't think that's true either. I've talked to people that love ELD oh, and man. I don't there, know. There's some really good products out there. There are. Yeah. That really help the driver. Um, oh yeah, benefit the company. You know, Fleet management you know, software. I'm sorry. Fleet management software. Well, I mean, just even you know, ELD, ELD. type. Yeah. So, what's a company you have in mind? Can you say a company? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Let's go to our next question. All right. So, I'm going to ask this. I want to see if I can get a number. How many vehicles are delivered in the new car space? There's about 17 to 18 million annual. That, that number is going it, to, it ebb and flows, you know, kind of some years a little more, some years a little. I think they're projecting a, a slight drop over the next two or three years, and then it's going to, and it's projected to go back up again. But it's generally about 17 million. million. Wow. So do you, I'm going to, here's a follow up then. How many carriers serve that market? Oh, I think about ten, roughly ten thousand. So if you if you picture the industry as kind of a, a triangle, those top forty carriers are sitting up here at the top of the the very narrow part of the triangle. The rest of the triangle down there, are the 
the rest of the fleets, the, your audience out there listening to the show tonight, they, they make up the majority of the industry. And I think most of the people watching are in used cars. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I would agree. You're, yeah. Are you still, you're not including used cars in the 17 and 18 million number, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's just new. No, yeah. Oh. It, it, it triples and quadruples once it gets down to the used car. Can you give an estimate, volume for used? I know that's a tough one. Triple, quadruple. I mean, think about how many times a car moves. Five times. Four. One, yeah. Once it's, after it's sold to the original owner, I mean, the original owner probably either takes it back, trades it in, and then it's sold. And, you know, who knows? Three or four times, I think, is the is kind of where, where people are at on that. Okay. Um, so how do you quantify a, a gross revenue? I saw a number 10 billion, 11 billion gross revenue in auto transport last year. What do, what do you think of that? Oh. You think that's um, even ballpark possible probably because it's interesting if i've asked like some experts conferences other you know think tanks and it's right. tough to nail down yeah i mean it's it, it that really is hard to nail down because you can kind of do it with a new car um you can figure you know those guys mostly have nine car trailers they're working um five, six days a week. So you can kind of work out, you know, you know how many vehicles are in the industry from the new car side. So you can kind of work out the numbers there. If you law of averages. So new car, how about this carriers in the used car space? Can you pinpoint a range on that? Um, I'll get a guess. I'll guess. I'm going to guess. 30 plus thousand. I think you're, I think that's about right on. I'm close. Okay. I think, I th from our guesstimates, we think there's about 40,000 carriers in wow. the industry. Wow. So if you have uh, auto, 000. auto, that's auto car, auto car haul carriers. Right? New and used. Carriers. New and, yeah. Right. 40 plus thousand. Yeah. 10 of those roughly being in new car. So if you're a service industry and you look at your, let's say you've been in business for a few years yeah. and you look at the number of car haulers that you have as customers and you're in the hundreds, you're, you haven't even made a dent. No. Holy mackerel. No, that, that was our big, um, you know, Early on, we really struggled with should we stay in, in auto transport or should we broaden it to transport and, you know, freight, flatbed. And just because of our background and, and where our roots were, we decided to, to stay. We are solely 100% auto haul. So. And explain more why would you not stay in auto transport what was it that made me think would you go to like where were you where were you in that i mean you did you're serving what kind of product again car delivery network you're serving the new car hauling industry that's primarily where cdn has been yeah. right as a service right. industry yeah. when you talked about getting into general trucking what what were you thinking of expanding it into? Well, this was actually before we had we had um, got in with the OEM. Okay. Started the. This was. Um, about this a year gets and into half. the Amazon tracking. Where's my freight? Question is that right? Uh, no. Yeah, I mean, we, we had the EPod. Okay. So we understood the value of, dude. Where's my car? <laughs> right but we that just is. i mean it was it we were too early i think at that point when, when they first came over here people um i mean not ever not everybody had a, a a smartphone that was able to download an app you had a lot of guys out there still on flip phones and you think about it you know before eld came along how many guys were forced to go out and buy a, a smartphone 
to be ELD compliant, you know, even up to just this past year. And almost, I think in addition to what you're saying is that now we're learning that you want to have an extra device, one just dedicated to the ELD. Yeah. Which we're not all at either, but yeah, I mean, th so things are moving really fast. Well, you do. I mean, you really do need a, a rugged, um, commercial right. grade tablet. We've always believed for your truck. This is not a commercial grade, you know. Right. And yet, that's what a lot of guys have. That's exactly right. That's right. I, I think what happens is I think of I think of the gravity of reality, like what you're talking about right now, and then we add in the promise, the advertising dream, where we're, everyone's going to have the color they want, and they can switch that every few weeks and get the bling and all this. And it, and it just, what is going to happen when reality meets the customer's promise? I think we're getting there. I mean, we are. We're, we're pretty much there. I mean, that's where, when the reality of the car not being ready to transport and you have two empty spots meets okay if you've got the ability to dig into the rail yard get somebody but even having to get somebody on the phone right. okay we got oh man we, there's two cars we can't get are there two others we can get now you're losing time your ELDs taking away you're freaking out yep. and hopefully oh, what with technology you can easily find that replacement well yeah I mean in those in those rail yards and plant facilities, they're very organized. Um, it's not like an auto auction at all. I mean, yeah, they are large, right. but they allow you to drive your truck around inside those areas to get to the area where, and they try to even dispatch you vehicles that are pretty close by one another. So um, the dispatchers, these dispatchers that they have in these companies are pretty damn good at what they do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they know all various types of equipments. Um, they know the product and how it'll fit on the trailer. So they know how to dispatch. You know, I, I would come in there a lot of times with a 5307 high mount Cottrell. And these, these dispatchers are used to loading nine car trailers, you know. And so they had to learn real quick, but they did. They picked up on it, you know, real quick and... They're pretty talented, so it takes it's a... It's not like... Like, I've booked some new cars off Central. Yep. Okay? And they weren't ready. One, it was only one or two vehicles. It took till the next day for them to find other vehicles that we could, we could get. Oh, yeah. No, it's not like that at all. <laughs> it yeah, can't they, be. They, they want those cars out of, that, out of that yard. So, in fact, you don't show up to pick up your load. And <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's... It's really bad. Interesting. Okay. Well, everyone's accountable, but that's how you that's right. get business done, I guess. You usually get a chance to make that mistake once. I can see that. Okay. All right. Let's go to another one. Uh, how many of that 17 to 18 million yep. of new, car, new vehicles yep. are moved using Car Delivery Network? About 3 million. So we have your 15, 17% of the market. All right. Through. Okay. How long did it take to get that level of penetration? Any idea? Um, it was pretty quick because early in the game, we were, I mean, there was some EPOD systems out there. Some uh, carriers out there had built, had already built their own EPOD systems. I know of one carrier who had had EPOD for probably five, seven years, maybe 10 years before we, before we did. So EPOD, you know, to some people wasn't anything new, but um, we were primarily the only third party out there in the game that had a good, so there was a E21 standard, um, EPOD standard that was, that the OEM, a, a group of, o, the OEM, the carrier, um, the rail companies, the inspection companies, um, a committee got together and created a standard 
21. What did you say that was called? E21. EPOD E21 standard. I've never heard of that either. It, it was kind of the way you had to build your EPOD to, to be compliant for the OEMs. So it had a requirements. Is this a federally mandated? Not no. federally. Just, just for a, the industry. Yeah, certainly. Okay, like an alliance council agreement between all the makers, right? It had to do certain features. Mm -hmm. Like when the driver marked the vehicle as picked up, you couldn't go back in to the pick. The driver wouldn't be allowed to go back from the picked up and change any of the damages or anything like that. So I've seen applications out there where the driver wants the vehicles picked up and he's got all his damage marked and he's driving down the road and he notices a dent in the side of the car. Now he's halfway between the origin and the destination. He can go back into the app and mark, you know, there's a dent there and take a photo of it on the panel. And you can't do that in ours or any of the ones that are, E gotcha. the rich and that's part of the E21 standard. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah. So there were, there were requirements like that that had to be met to be Which, approved. And that's a big deal. It's a to huge the, Right, to the manufacturer, to yeah. the dealership. Yep. It's accountability. And, it, it, and really, Jay, it really protects the driver because, you know, I'm just speaking of my own experience because I hauled new cars. Um, there were so many times when I would get to a dealership and unload my vehicles and I'm sure there's guys in your audience that can attest to this too. They'll unload the vehicles and they'll, you know, get a signed off VOL, no damage. And then a day later you get a call saying, Hey, we found a Nick on, on the, on a wheel, or we found a dent, a slight dent in the front bumper. And they want to charge you nine hundred dollars for a front front bumper, and so you either have two choices: you either pay the claim, or you don't haul for that for the carrier anymore. Terrible and situation. So, yeah, a lot of. I mean, we built our business model around that, so we really couldn't turn it down. Not couldn't throw away million dollar contracts and stuff for nine hundred dollars. So you pay the nine hundred dollars. Well, and then what happens when you go back to the lot a week later? You see the exact same truck sitting on the front line with the dent still in the bumper that they charge you $900 to fix. <laughs> Unbelievable. It, you know, and so, so with, with EPOD, that stopped a lot of that stuff because then you had photos, even, you know, we would take photos of, of the vehicles before we loaded them, even if there wasn't damage. You know, I'd get generally four panels, all four sides of the vehicle. So. Right, and that's a big part of obviously the uh, physical documentation with photos, yeah. and then you also mark the damages, and that's a big part of it. And that's been so you've had photos and damage codes as part of your system for yeah since it, since the inception. Okay, what year is that? Uh, well, I shouldn't say we had a, we didn't have the. AIG codes necessarily because uh, we put those in with the E21 standard. Um, so I think 2012 or 2013 is when they, maybe 2010 is when they started over in the UK. And basically that over in the UK, they don't do a lot of car transport. They do mainly drive service over there just because of the, the nature of the Geography. country. Smaller, you know, you right. can drive things and they have the infrastructure over there to be able to, when a, when a driver goes from A to B, he can catch a train to take him back to A. You know, they have a transportation infrastructure that allows that. More, more like a drive away. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. It's drive away service. Yeah. That's so interesting. They do a lot of that over there. And that's primarily, well, that is what the system was built for. Um, Wayne was the visionary and all that. And Mike is our... You know, he was the guy that could get in there and build it, build the technology. And so, cool. Um, I see some live chat. I've missed several comments. Let's see. We got. Uh, oh, by the way, I just want to give a shout out. Truckify gave a super chat. Thank you, Truckify. Appreciate it. Um, since we're talking about car hauling software in the industry, uh, Truckify is going to be on in two weeks. 
So all the way leading up to Matt's, um, which I guess I don't think you're going to be at Matt's, right? Me? No. Okay. So you're going to have to watch all the video. Yeah, I'll Hopefully, watch it. <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping to just pack the show with live video and interviews and whatnot. So that'll be cool. So if, if you're not going to be at Matt's, <laughs> if the Mid-America Truck Show in about a month, you want to stay tuned, watch the interviews. Uh, we're going to be live on Facebook. We're going to be having a lot of interesting interviews. Um, so Truckify, thanks so much for uh, the super chat and saying hello. Uh, who else we got here? With Brian says hello. Shaggy says hello. Shaggy is in the freight trucking community. He's got a freedom to learn movement for freight dispatchers, freight haulers, and um, uh, we had Michael Cook on the show a few weeks ago talking about his ELD and fleet software management solutions. Equipment hauling, Sergeant Shill says hello. Hey, what's up, Sergeant Shill? And let's see, Bulldog says, could you set up in a different lane to get in there? Oh, that's from uh, Can Candy's talking about. Chris of Bulldog. Candy's going to be on the show here in a little bit. In fact, we're going to get into the panel here in a few minutes. So before we do get into the panel, let's do this. Let's do another couple questions. And we'll say, I've got some other questions that we'll save well, for the let panel. Me, let me tell you something real quick, Jay. Yeah. You know, when you asked me to come on the show, I am not the type of person that gets up and stands in front of people in an audience. Even this is, you know, nerve wracking to me just because I know people are out there listening. Awesome. But, but I do it and I jump out of my comfort zone because I love what you're doing. Oh, man. We support you and Auto Transport Intel. We support what Ty is doing. Um, and, and I think that the industry has needed Jay for a long time. I mean, and I, I, I'm really happy to see what you're doing for the industry. So yeah, I you. wish that something like this was around when I was starting up because you know, it was just kind of feel your way through and, and try to figure it out. And I actually got the, uh, Ty invited me on to one of his training sessions the other day um, with, with one of his clients. Awesome. And man, I want to tell you what, that thing was top, and I'm not just blowing smoke here. And, and, but it was top, I was impressed. I mean, the guy knows what he's talking about. And it was outlined out, and, you know, it covered, I mean, it was, I was just, I was really impressed with it. So, thank you. You know, it means a lot. Um, I agree in that when I was dispatching, I, I really didn't have anywhere to go for advice. I remember asking people around the office, what's a gate pass? Yep. Like, it shouldn't be that hard to learn the industry. And I know I even see it in Facebook. Uh, questions get asked, and then there's people that make them feel stupid, and then there's people that will give some information. Um, I, I don't understand why it's so tough to get information so that's really what this is all about is to is to get information and i'm i'm not the end all be all expert that's why i need i need you on the shows i'm not either <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> okay let's say it this way i think is the two of us together we have a lot of information so yeah. to to bandy about the phrase expert right we're gonna we're humble and we're going to say, okay, we're not the expert. But it turns out we have a lot of information. Well, but I really enjoy just talking to the guys out there on the, the drivers. I mean, we have tons of – we've got the big guys, but those big guys, you know, those big carrier companies have hundreds of subhaul sub haulers, smaller guys out there helping them um, uh, with capacity. Yeah, and um, so those guys sign up with us and they use our ePod system to be ePod compliant and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we get to talk to them and, I, and I'll, I call them from time to time, you know, just sit there. I'll, I'll put two days aside and just sit there and spend practically a full two days of nothing but going down the list and calling those small carriers and just talking to them. You know, some of them, they don't like me, <laughs> you know, they complain about the EPOD and that they have to pay for it and all this, that and the other. But, 
you know, I get a lot of good feedback and I get a lot of good information. My knowledge really comes from those guys. Me yeah. too. Everything so. I learned is Ty, Ty likes to say everything I learned, I learned in the transport parking lot, yeah. which is true for the carrier. And since I came from dispatching, everything I learned was through talking to drivers, owners, brokers, customers, locations, and there's so much information. I figured it, it's better just to share the info and raise our industry. Right. Wouldn't that be great if dealerships on the on the average, when they saw a car hauler coming, they were like, "Awesome, my car's here!" Instead of, "Oh, my car's here." Yeah. <laughs> I want him off the lot as soon as possible. Exactly. <laughs> Keep him away from the donuts. The Nobody donuts talks to him. Can you imagine all the things that are said as they see the car all over Okay, everyone, stop talking. You, everyone, get out of here. You go in the back. You, somebody. <laughs> it does feel like that sometimes. Okay. I felt definitely that way. Some, some of the dealers were pretty nice. I mean, they were very accommodating. I had some good friends that, you know, because you go to the same dealers, you meet meet these guys and all the way from the owner of the dealership to to the porter, you know, right. Um, the lot boy out there. That's the part. -time. That's right. That's right. Well, and I know that. So as a dispatcher, one of the things that um, I then got savvy at trying to accomplish for the for the driver was to call ahead to locations and know how to talk to people, know what they were thinking, right? Yep. And, you know, whether it's a residential customer or a dealership or the security shack at the Mannheim, you know, what are they focused on? And whatever they're focused on, let's start with that. Let's get yep. that hammered out, sure. and then we can get the information we need. I mean, face it, if you really think about this industry, transportation and logistics is the thorn in everybody's side. It, it's a necessary means, but it's not where the money, I mean, the money, if you follow the money in, in, in automotive, the money is at the sales end of it. That's where all the money's made, along those dealerships. So really, I mean, from the OEM, from the, from the dealer, from, you know, anybody that we're trying to deal with, nobody really cares about the logistical part of it or the transportation part of it. It's just a necessary means that I have to use to get me to where I can make my money. And I, I, I see that reflected in, uh, well, I, I want to say Cox Automotive and Central Dispatch. Cox is focused on the dealer side not the carrier side. And like you said, it's where the money is, right? You follow the money. So you can't you can't blame them for doing business. No. I don't blame them. But that means that you've got this important side that's just not being focused on. It's not yeah. being uplifted. We've chosen our industry. <laughs> we have. I think it's chosen us. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know, man. The first time I remember what got me hooked is uh, I remember getting up close to this big 18 wheeler one time and I, can't, I got up in it and everything and you know the sparkle in your eye when you see that big those big shiny chrome tanks and the wheels and the big chrome bumper and you know that that's what gets you hooked right there you know is that big old truck and so that's awesome. And a lot of people feel that way. I mean, a lot of people, this is where Ty likes to say it's all about the car. And what yeah. we're talking about is the vehicle, man. People love vehicles, trucks, oh, cars, yeah. motorcycles, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter based on your preferences, but you've got, you got people collecting cars that nobody even wants to drive. Yeah. So... Um, all right, let's do this. We're going to hear a message from Legal Shield, and while we're doing that, I'm going to bring in Ty, Candy, and Ron, and we're in for another hour, or so strap in, get comfortable, and I'm going to be right back. All right. 
Absolutely. With this particular plan, this is a specialty plan that actually protects you as you as you are in commission of a CDL truck. So when you're behind the wheel of a rig, outside of your personal vehicle, anything that's considered a, a CDL vehicle, the, you get access to a plan that protects you in that world. So just for example, this is a commercial driver's legal plan that we particularly offer. We offer specifically to commercial drivers, whether or not you're an owner operator or you actually drive for a company, you can have access to this. So what it's going to actually give you is tragic accident representation. So that means if you kill somebody in a vehicle, they don't have to be your fault. Somebody slams on brakes in front of you. Now you're in a situation where you had a, uh, a multi-thousand pound vehicle that killed someone, and now how much is that going to cost you to get representation for that? The well, legal shield is going to be able to represent you as long as you weren't drinking or driving or anything like that. When lose a draw, you'll be covered throughout the trial for that situation. We're going to give you coverage on all your motor vehicle moving traffic violations, whether it could be a logbook violation, overweight, it could be uh, anything dealing with speeding, uh, missing a scale, any of those things that may happen. And you know those tickets are quite expensive for a truck driver versus us regular people who drive a regular car. And sometimes they can sit that truck there until you pay that fine before you can move it. So this is going to give you access to be able to have attorneys represent you in court so that you don't physically have to be there. You can still be moving loads, making money, while the attorneys are handling those pieces of your business that may pop up. And this is a national program as well, by the way. So that means if you're driving anywhere in the United States or Canada, this plan, this plan covers you. Also, we're going to help you with IRS audit situation. A lot of you guys are owner operators. Then you got to do taxes. It's 1099 income. How do you report that stuff? How do you know what you can write off? If you get audited, who do you call? Well, it's usually the tax attorneys thousands of dollars an hour just to get help with that. Well, with this program, 50 hours are already taken, uh, taken care of if you're audited, for them to go to the audit with you and all those types of things as well. The last thing I want to tell you real briefly, that this plan is going to actually give you access to get your will done. Folks in this country, 90% of minorities and 70% of all Americans, we're all going to die. But those percentages do not have a last will and testament to leave and dictate where their assets go upon death. Folks, we can say everybody, let somebody else figure it out, but the state is hoping that you don't have one. Why? Because they get a percentage when they have to get their attorneys involved to be able to figure out what to do with the rest of your assets. But also, folks, who raises your kids? What happens to the schools they go to? What about the morals and things that you're putting into them? Who's going to raise them? The will allows you to be able to get that done so there's no additional cost. It's included in your membership. Folks, this membership is $32.95 a month, so I guarantee you, you can take full advantage of it today. Get in contact with me at 302-270-4507. Even the fish want to get the plane. They're jumping out there. <laughs>I thought I saw Candy sure in why. for a second. I only got the audio. I didn't get the video. I'm not sure why. So, oh, you didn't. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to re-invite. I'm going to send another invite to Ron. See if Ron gets this one. And then I can kick you out you on, on the audio? audio. I can hear okay. you. I can hear you. But I can't see you. I can't see me. I can't see you. Uh, and that's okay. Because we'll get it, we'll get it figured out, and then we got oh, we got Candy joining. Okay, Candy's video is coming up, I believe, and then either on Candy or Ron, I'm hearing your audio. I think I just got yeah, in. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm, uh, I got your link again. I'm hitting it again. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to kick you out on this, so try to move. Okay. Try to come back in on the video. Okay. And if that doesn't work, you can join by audio. You can hear me then, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I just well, can't see it. You're okay. Um, we got a, we have a mixed bag here. We've got Ron on the audio over here. No, nope, it's over here. Yeah. Oh, and then we got, we got Ron by audio and by iPhone. <laughs> yeah.
That's I cool. See. And then we also got Candy. Candy's with us. Candy from Jacksport Storage. Am I here? I can, I can, I can see. I think you're in the dark, and that's okay. I can yes, see it's a dark uh, screen. Definitely. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and then I got Ty over here next to me. There's Ty from CTS Business Coaching.com. It's no secret Ty is my business partner at CTS. You got Ty uh, does the coaching with the new car haulers. And somebody still has my audio you? feed on, which is okay because I'm hearing an echo in my ears. So why not a double echo? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's okay. It really is. This is one of those shows, you know. Um, what I'm going to do, Ron, is I'm going to get rid of either. The first time you joined or the second time you joined? I guess do the first time because the second one I can see the audio. Oh, I mean, can? excuse me, the video. Okay. Yeah, but what happens is when I start talking, the video goes <laughs> away. And then when I stop talking, the video comes back up. Okay. Would, you want, which one do you want me to get rid of? The first one or the second one? I'm going to get rid of the first I one. Guess, yeah, get rid of the first one. Maybe that will resolve you, the issues of the second one. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So you're now joined by iPhone. Are you still with me, Ron? No. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, man, there must be some kind of, like, uh, lightning bugs or something in the winter snow. I was making a joke to Kimberly that with all this snow and winter craziness, we're going to have tornadoes in Kansas City. No joke. I was looking on my phone, and they talked about tornadoes. Mm. So we're going to have snow nornators. Just like a sharknator. It's got to be better than the spotted lantern fly. <laughs> All right, here's what I'm going to do, Ron. I'm removing your iPhone, and I'm going to send you another invite. Let's see what happens. Let's try that. And while we're doing that, I have another question to ask Derek. All right, <laughs> Derek. Um... Okay, is it only big companies who move vehicles with your software? Like I said earlier, so these these large big companies do use the software, but they also use a lot of smaller sub haulers or third party carriers, and those can be a one one man band. He's got one guy with a truck. Or you might have a company that has 10, 15 trucks. And they, they basically lease on to that, to that large car haul company and help them move. They provide more capacity, basically. So even though a three-car hauler isn't a super trucker, it's an important part of the ecosystem. Absolutely. That's very interesting. I yep. think... Uh, we need to get that on auto comment for Facebook groups because it seems like there's a lot of, and this is what we're talking about as far as information. It seems like there's a lot of comments out there that are geared towards making a, a smaller hauler feel like he's not a super trucker and therefore somehow discardable. But not true. I mean, you need sub haulers. So, Jay, I, and I don't know, maybe I'm, if, if I'm not allowed to say this. You just, are. Um, but I, I'm, I'm curious to know how many of those guys, how many, how many of your audience <clears throat> guys out there have heard of AHA? That's a is good it, question. AHA. I love it, that question. It, it's exactly what I, I think those guys need. You want to? Do you know? You want to explain to them what I? I'll let you do that if if that's okay. Well, you know way more about it than I do. But <laughs> AHA A H A A Auto Haulers Association of America, yep. which is now you're going to finish the thought. Is what? What is AHA? It's basically an organization of car haulers for car haulers. So a group of those tier one guys um, got together and they started, uh, we have a, we have two annual meetings. Uh, I say we, because we are a member of AHA. And so you don't have to be a car haul company to be a member of AHA. Um, but I mean, it's, it is 
just basically like what this show is. Um, it's two and a half days, basically, of, of nothing but good information about car hauling and, and the industry. And, I mean, uh, the conferences are invaluable um, for the small guy all the way up to the, to the big guys. And so we're, we're seeing more and more of the smaller guys come to the conferences and start showing up at these things. And that's what these bigger guys want. They want the industry there. They want the smaller guys. They recognize that the smaller guys make up the majority of the industry. And that's what they want there. And it's, I mean, you've got, what, 80% plus of the industry. If United Road counts as one company, right. and you've got 30 plus thousand carriers or the is that 30 plus thousand companies or 30 plus thousand trucks how would you look at that uh trucks trucks okay and united road has how many trucks i don't know man they just bought fleet cars right which had what 100 plus 800 something didn't they i don't think they owned any of those trucks they might own i think that was all owner operator type Mm-hmm. It was an owner-operator model that they had, and um, but they definitely have the contracts and all the revenue. United Road is now, I mean, was already the biggest carrier and is certainly the biggest still. Right. Did you see that article about Jackie Cooper in Louisville closing their terminal? No, I didn't know about that. How big is Jackie Cooper? Um, I think, and don't quote me on this, but I think they're the largest unionized. Well, there's only two unionized now. I don't know where they, um, so them and Cassins are pretty much the only two left. I'm just going to say that. Oh, name. Unionized. Okay. I think they have somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 trucks. That's a big carrier. I yeah, I don't know exactly their number. But. Can a one man owner operator meet a company like that at aha uh yeah absolutely yeah you will be you at aha all of these these larger companies their owners are usually there the wow. ceos the presidents you're going to meet the top brass of those companies and they're i mean they're as approachable as me or ty or you are um they're very welcoming very accommodating they always you know anytime i've ever approached any of them you know they, they're just willing to talk that is an incredible opportunity what's it take to go to aha to meet um, the folks I was, well i you could google them and you could probably find out all of the details from google don't get me to lying <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of because I'm not really a spokesman for AHA or anything like that. But we are a member, and so for the guys out there that are you know, looking for more industry-type information, a conference to go to, such as MATS or something like that, this is very uh, industry-specific, though, whereas MATS is you know, trucking industry. This is auto haul industry. So I searched aha okay yep let's do scroll down a little bit okay oh, i'm getting all kinds of crazy this auto... yeah if you scroll down you'll you'll oh, see it i will all right there's auto haulers association of america all right so auto haulers america.com yep go to auto haulers america.com and so suppliers are there, um, the guys that, the trailer manufacturers, the, a lot of the truck manufacturers are there. Um, there's fuel people, uh, Loves is there. Um, Flying J is, I can't remember all the different um, vendors that are there, but they generally have those type of suppliers there. So you can talk about fuel, getting on um fuel savings programs and uh if you're a member of aha i think you get a discount on tires and 
all that type of stuff. There's several different um, software platforms that are competitors to us, but you know, we, it's all friendly competition. So I, I know as, uh, oh, here we got some dinner sponsorship spots available. Okay, this is in Atlanta in May. So you'll be there in May. Yep. Okay. And we're also talking, you said it's twice a year. So then we got in May and then again in October. In the fall, yeah. And, and the big one is in the fall. It is. Yeah, that's when they have a lot of the equipment uh, at that one. Um, but they demonstrate equipment, yeah. bring out the trucks. Yeah, they'll have a lot of a lot of the big trucks there. Cottrell, I think last year or the year before, had their big, uh, I think they just passed the law where they could extend the trailer length. Um, yeah, the, the overhang. No, well, they got the 80 foot truck truck trailer now. Yeah. And then you get the six foot off the back and four off the front. So they had those Whoa. that equipment there, and you could see it, and feel it, touch it, smell it, climb up in it. Can you lick it? If you want to. <laughs> it's not that kind of show. It's a family show. I tell you what, man, that equipment's clean enough. You could lick it. <laughs> well, we all like hydraulic fluid. Well, I guess you better. All right, cool. Hey, so Derek, that's what's that on your shirt? Vin Carrier. Whoa. Vin Carrier. What is that? I can't talk about that yet, guys. Oh. Oh, it's that Ooh. kind of show. That kind of t-shirt. I like that. But Jay, I want to come back in the in the summertime. Yeah. And I want to I want to talk about Vin Carrier. Well, you know, it's cool you say that because um, I got a, I got a feeling, I got a funny feeling that, uh, sometime in the beginning of July, uh, I'm going to be available to have you back on the show and, uh, maybe we can uh, really talk about some good information. What do you guys think about that? So we're just going to, we're going to ride out the rest of this, uh, that was great. <laughs> pause that we have happening here. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I love it, man. I'm telling you, um, really what's happening here is uh, I'm at week after week. I want to I want to bring everybody in. Um, so by the time the summertime hits, man, the gates are open and it's, it's all bets or, you know, it's going to be anybody's game. Um, there's a lot of information that just hasn't gotten out there and um, I'm here to help. That's my job. Hey, so Derek, are you seeing, so mostly you're in the new car market. And so if I'm a sub carrier, if I'm a, say, an owner operator with my one ton and three car trailer, yep. I want to haul new stuff. Does, do I talk to you? How does, how does that work? Um, you could, you just contact one of those carriers that you see hauling new cars. Mm -hmm. And, um, now they're, the unionized carriers aren't allowed to give away their freight, so they can't do that at all. By by contract, it has to be hauled on their equipment, so so they can't do that. But so don't go calling Jack Cooper or Cassins because you won't get anywhere with them. But um, all the other carriers out there, you can you can generally get on with them. Um, there are certain insurance requirements that you'll have to have um, for for hauling that freight. So a little more expensive, but you have work year round. So who, who generally has the OEM non-union contract? The broker, carrier, or a dispatcher? Um, <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Whoops, family show. <laughs> it's the carrier. Oh, the carrier. Wow. The carrier. Okay, interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, in fact, I think one of the I heard that one of the OEMs um, offered a contract to a non-carrier company um, back last year, and it, it had some they had some problems with it. 
So an OEM went with a broker? Is it what? I, I don't, I'm not sure that you would maybe a call them a broker. It's just mm -hmm. they were, they're a, a non carrier. Yeah, they don't, I don't think they had that many assets. <clears throat> so, and by assets, I mean trucks. Right. So, so, to get a, to, so if I'm the new guy in the business and I want to go after the OEM account, what do I need to have to do that? Can I get it being a new guy? Good. I like this. This is a good. Question. Yeah, you can. Uh, but you got to have about 20 trucks before they'll talk to you seriously about taking mm -hmm. on the map. Okay. And if you had five, I mean, you'd be you'd be pretty stressed out trying to service that contract. Is that fair? You wouldn't. They wouldn't offer you up a contract. They wouldn't talk to you. Right. Hey, who said that? Me. Hi. What are you What's doing, up, Candy? Candy. <laughs> I'm hanging in here. You know me hey, so quiet. Jay, can here. you hear me too? Yeah, I hear you, Ron. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, I didn't talk this whole time thinking you couldn't hear me. <laughs> oh man, you know. I don't want to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, listen, no, Matt. you guys. What do you guys have? What do you guys? Okay, thinking? listen. Actually, I have a question uh, uh, to Derek there, uh, and I, I would be surprised if, if, of course, it hasn't come across the, uh, the table yet. Being that the used car uh, market is so large, just like you say, the top. Uh, top of that pyramid that you described earlier on is so small and and the 60 percent below are the, are the ones who um are the brokers and, and and the small carriers this whole system you guys are uh are presenting Ackerman hasn't done something to really bring together uh all these uh sub haulers all this used car uh, market because to me the used car market just like you said one car sometimes is moved five different times it's so much larger than a new car market for some reason though somebody hasn't come together in one of these uh, uh, um, thinking tanks and put something like this together for the used car division. Because again, one car moves five times, six times, seven times. It's just so much larger. But for some reason, uh, this ha there hasn't been a large focus to universally put a standard that every has to, everybody has to follow in the used car uh, market. So it works even better. Than, than, than the OEMs. To me, now the OEM market, to me, seems like the data is already there. Uh, it's been so many years of data. They, they, all there are is after data, just like you said before, everything is data. Used car market has 100 times more data that has not been accumulated yet to, to, to uh, uh, or somebody hasn't been behind it, to be behind it and accumulate it to make something like this. I'm surprised mm. nobody has done that yet. Yeah, I mean, it, it It really is shocking. I mean, we sit back and, and look at the industry and, uh, and Ron, to answer your question, um, we have been so focused on our customers here over the past five and six years and, and with um, really perfecting um, what our, our main product, which is ePod, um, that's where our focus has been. And we haven't really looked too much out into the used car market um, just because we, we had kind of found a niche there in, in the new, on the new side of it. And yeah, absolutely. Has, absolutely. So I, I, I can see yeah. how it is. I, I worked for a large carrier for, for many years and I got uh, the first tasting of how they were trying to do things electronically when the tablets came out mm -hmm. uh, and each trucks to, to, to do that same kind of EPOT system. Um, and I saw how, um, because the data was there, that was making this all possible. Um, <clears throat> and this is going back at least, Jesus, I want to say it was in 2008, probably when it really took hold where, uh, at the time I worked for allied systems holdings, uh, of, okay. you probably remember allied, yeah. uh, and they were big of, of, of trying to be the, uh, the front runners on all this cause they were the largest carrier at the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, the data was there for the new car. Everything you've said so far, as far as uh, some of the, the uh, pieces you guys have put together to, to make this where you're at now, has always been there, just scattered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and now I feel it's the same thing with the used car uh, uh, market. It, it's 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 so much bigger. Uh, to me, I prefer the used car market over the new car. I used to do new car for 15 years. Uh, I was in a union shop all those years, so it made everything a lot easier and a lot less liability. But now that for me that the unions are out, uh, I find the liability a lot higher. 
So I prefer the used car market, uh, yeah. less liability. Uh, but now the ePod system is working with these through these apps that, for example, Ready is using, Cars Arrive are using, uh, United Road are using, uh, but it's still not universal. There's not a, a universal standard across the board. Uh, yeah. But the data is there again already. It's been accumulating yeah. over the last couple of decades consistently, and it's getting larger, especially even more so now because you have these car maxes, you have these car vanas, you have these big supermarket uh, uh, stores mm -hmm. that are moving a lot of vehicles on top of uh, uh, what the, the, the dealers are uh, are moving. Yeah. Um, and I'm and again, um, it's there. I, I would I would be interested to go this year to, to that to that uh, that uh, aha convention in, in I May or October. I highly convention. recommend it. Which, by the way, what's the cost to get into aha? It's it's on that website, Jay. Okay. <laughs> Is it? Do you think it's prohibited? No, Pro no, they make it very affordable. I mean, that's affordable. Thousand. That was a tier one sponsor. Uh, right. They, uh, I think it's three, maybe five hundred dollars for for a person to to go. Um, it's not per year, but that's per conference. Right. Maybe maybe five hundred to go to the conference. Five hundred. Right, five hundred dollars to yeah. attend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That answers that. It's good. If I can make this one comment, uh, De Derek, again, is this the same um, convention? It's been around for many years. Uh, this tier one convention, but it was only for the uh, owners of the carriers of the large carriers, and used to they used to pay a, a large. Uh, uh, membership do yearly to be in this but it was only the owners of these large carriers who were at these meetings is this the same one that has now involved and become what it is now or is this something totally different um, do you know about that do you I, don't, know? I, don't, I don't i don't know what you're referring to um i don't know I, I wish i knew the name exactly uh, yeah. but about yeah about 10 12 years ago there was one that started where all the top uh uh, uh, carriers uh, being, you know, uh, OEM carriers uh, would go, the owners, and they would spend like a weekend and, and talk and and, 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 and uh, try to come up with new ideas and, and, and put everything out there on the table to see what they can move forward and leave behind. Uh, and I was just wondering if it's the same one that's maybe now evolved to this where they let in the... Uh, uh, are you referring public. to Finnish Vehicle Logistics? <laughs> Say that one more time. That? Say that again? Finnish Vehicle Logistics Conference. Hmm. No, well, I'm not. I'm not. But uh, yeah, I don't. Sure I, don't know what, I, I don't know what. I don't think Aha has been around ten or twelve years, but I could be wrong. Right, right. I wish I could remember. But anyway, it definitely is is great uh, what you're offering out there. Uh, but again, me being from the used car side of things, um, I can't wait until uh, all this data is put together and whoever does do it. I think is going to be bigger than the OEM. Uh, question for you, Ron. It, let's you got the data right. What would you like to see happen as far as? <laughs> well, we could be here all night for this, but <laughs> in in a in a short in short in short, uh, it's pretty much. Uh, listen, there's so much data up there, and what happens with the used car division too is that it involves a lot of different cultures. Uh, uh, being uh, uh, languages, being uh, mentalities, um, and there's not a universal language that we all use to communicate. Okay, there's so much data on, uh, for example, even actually Mannheim has this one little thing that just came out where now you can track where that car is in that in that auction. Uh, I don't know if everybody's aware of this yet. I think it just came out a couple of weeks ago, um, mm. but. The same way that OEM, that these OEM carry, uh, companies track their car from when it hits the rail yard, the port, to when it gets onto the trucks, to when it gets to to um, to the dealers, you're using three or four different uh, apps or sites to do this instead of having just one. Okay, and also the um, the and because of that, it adds it, it, when you when you have one car that you're following through one app and then you pick it up in another app, there's a loss there. There's a loss of communications uh, of steps or, or uh, you followed from point A to point B on that particular car. 
that's why I feel like uh, um, the data that's here now would make it so much easier for even the buyers who, who uh, ship these cars um, to know whether I have to make every move more calculated. I, I know I'm rambling a little bit, so I can't exactly pinpoint, but there's just so many dynamics in the used car uh, part. Uh, but with the data being there, I know somebody can bring this all together and make it easier. And I want it better. Well, I want to say this yeah. is that companies that attempt to umbrella all of the different aspects and bring it right. all under one app, it, I think it's too much. It's too much to bite off at one time. Well, yeah, 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 yeah I agree. There. You can only eat it one bite at a time, and that's what we're doing. We're eating the elephant one bite at a time. You have to. Otherwise, you're trying to eat the buffet in one sitting, and it's it's not going to work out. You're going to end up with disjointed not, parts, oh. <laughs> things that are underdeveloped, the inability to truly interface with customer. On different, it's just it's too much. Yeah. Jay, I've seen you eat at the sushi bar. Okay, buddy. It's, if if we could build an app like I can eat sushi, we'd have <laughs> wow. it. <laughs> Jay, do you feel like Central Dispatch, Ready Auto, Mannheim, like all used car auctions, dealer track, don't you feel like they're kind of already doing that? That's the information, even, you know, the software programs that we're using, you don't feel like, would you stop, Ty? <laughs> I, I, I feel, I agree with Candy, Jay. I feel like, uh, I feel like that's what <laughs> they're <nobody's>... doing. <laughs> I know Boss. Jay's giving the no sign, but that's kind of what I mean. I agree with Candy. Okay. It's there. But it's that's there what they're doing. The but they're market. still yeah. focused on many aspects that are all under the dealer umbrella. Well, when you said used, used dealers, and like you said, it's a many different types of used. Okay, but I want to say this. With as much as Cox has to offer, I mean, brands and companies, it's a... It's an aircraft carrier. But when you, as a carrier, as a carrier, you get the load, it the technology almost ends right there. And now you need other technologies to then take that load and get it to your point B. Cox stopped with the carrier side of the technology. They got all kinds of dealers, services, and you name it. But when it when that load hits the carrier, their technology actually stops. That's my opinion. Well, I would want to know what would be the use in data like that. Like as far as what runs, what would you do? I mean, what do you feel like could be accomplished? What would be the goal in having all the used car data? Because I know with with um, OEM, the the concern is that. Even the dealers, OEM dealers are governed. Most of the parties involved are governed or sanctioned in a different way than used auto dealers, used auto resellers, everything involved. Used to, to me, I see like um, like a hot dog, throwing a hot dog down a hallway when it comes to gathering data. So what, what would you do? What would be the point in having all that data together with one person or one business like I don't know. Uh, what do you guys say? What do you do with all that well, data? Because there's people out there a, data farming. Standard. What are they doing? Ask Google. <laughs> all right, you punted, well, Ron. What are you saying? That's that's what I'm saying. Like like Google, they made a search engine compiling all this data to make it easier for the dealer, uh, the uh, the hauler, and the auction to communicate these cars and find them. That, that's that's what I'm talking about. Um, it, it's not for one company to just own it. It's for a standard we put out there, um, and and uh, have this to be a standardized across the used car market, um, just like Google is. I mean, yeah, Google owns Google, but we have a search engine with them. We put in some information that we need on a particular something where it is, and you can find it. Uh, sometimes dealers too, they need to find. They're looking for a particular uh, type of vehicle uh, because they need 10 uh, cruises. Uh, and it's easy for them to know, oh, 10 cruises are at uh, this place um, and it hasn't been moved yet. Let me move it here before it goes somewhere else. I'm trying to narrow down. There's so many mm -hmm. dynamics. It's, it's hard 
to really uh, uh, pinpoint exactly how I can communicate that. But um, again, okay. uh, there's, there's so much data out there already in the used car market uh, that, but there hasn't been a standard yet on, oh. on, on how to move it, how to locate it, um, who has what. That's right. Uh, yeah, you, there um, hasn't, there's not a standard yet. I think that's true. Are you saying that? Because I think that I th I don't think there's a standard yet. I no, want to say this. Let's say you're a customer. You want to buy a car. Don't customers today feel like they've got much more control over the car buying process than they did in the past? I don't know if they actually do, but they feel like they do. Given mm -hmm. with True Car and, and different apps that let them feel like they've got the car buying process power. But do car shipping customers feel like they've got any power? No, they don't. Isn't it with the shipper that the problem begins? They don't have the power. They, they go on to Google, and they literally, they are throwing darts. But what would they do with that power? Jesus, if they don't have the power and they do this, what would they do I'm with not the saying power? they should have the power, oh. but they don't. They clearly don't have the power. Right? I mean, the car shipping process shouldn't begin with throwing a dart. Should it? Well, I think customers appreciate Go ahead, Ty. Well, no, I was thinking about the, uh, you know, we're talking about OEM. <clears throat> Derek's a great reference for talking about OEM. Jay and I, for quite a while, we said, that, you know, it's all about the car. Follow the life of a car. So if you kind of step back and you look at, OEM, the transport side of it, and Derek, I think you can back me up on this. Who sets the standard when we move new cars? The manufacturer, right? Yes. Okay, so they have the car. Now, this is where Derek and I may, may have a disagreement, but as it stands today, who has the cars on the used side? The carrier. The shipper. No. Auction. Auction, right. Ty is totally auction right. The dealer. That's it's the auction and the dealer. Those are the people that have the used cars. So if we look at OEM, who sets the standard for the carrier? I don't know about you guys, but I've heard a lot of stories. If you go to a rail yard, a marshaling yard, a <clears throat> manufacturing plant, and you try to pull out of there without four straps on each car, there's a good chance you may not come back. Yeah. So the good news is, is I've actually been kicked out of three auctions right, for doing something I probably shouldn't have been doing. I got back in, but the auction can set the standard for the carrier. So if we really step back and take a look at what's really going on here, whether you like them or you hate them, Cox is certainly, in my opinion, the equivalent to the OEM guys. Mm -hmm. And I think... You know, for years when I built my business, I would try to emulate my car dealer. So I spent a lot of time at a dealership learning what's their pain. Why do they always ask me when are the cars going to be there? Why are they always riding me? Hurry up. So, you know, the auction, again, whether you like them or you don't, whether they're going to be here next year or not, they're catering to the dealer who ultimately has the car which is what we all want. So whatever's happening with Cox, Central, Ready, Cars Arrive, Odessa, all these guys, I mean, it's almost like they're the ones that are setting the standards. So what do we got to do to get those cars? That's just my thought. Okay, so I want to jump in and say, if Cox is setting the standard, then there's no point in even asking questions. We just wait until they put out another bowl of red jello, right? No. Because you said it right, Jay. I think you did, which was as soon as they, if you go to the auction and you watch that Corvette go through and somebody buys it for $110,000 and the auctioneer says sold, the auction doesn't care too much about you and I after that, right? No. But if they do care about the dealer, and so they make it easy for the dealer because he bought that Corvette at his office while he's in his underwear, probably playing his guitar. Mm, mm, 
So they're going to give him the option now. This is great. Don't even call the transport guy. We'll put it. We'll post it on a load board for you. Ready logistics. Wow. But do with that. Okay. Then answer me why. Why would Ready Logistics start cutting off? folks that want to get signed up with their network, this gets back into the capacity question. I mean, what's the disconnect? I'm wondering now, Derek may have an answer to this, but I'm wondering yeah, if new cars Jay, are that, booming. That, yeah, Ron? Jay, that happened, yeah, Jay, that happened with Ready, uh, I'd say probably about three years ago here on this, uh, in this New York region, especially for uh, the uh, Long Island, uh, New York, New Jersey area. Uh, they weren't letting in the carriers for, I remember, six to eight months. Uh, they weren't adding on anymore. Uh, I have a friend of mine who wanted to get in, and I was in. You know, I had been in with them for a while already. And he was the one who gave me the heads up. He's like, yeah, they're, they're not adding any more on. Sure enough, another guy asked me how I got it on. I told him, yeah, I just did, you know, like followed their uh, their packet that they sent over. Gave him, gave him all my credentials, and uh, I was in. And sure enough, it must have been like six to eight months until... That those same two guys are like, yeah, can you believe it? I'm finally in. It took me forever. But I've heard that uh, in other areas too, as well. That I don't know why that is, though. But I have heard of it as well uh, too. So and, why? And I guess, can you? Do you have a guess? My only guess, my only guess. for example, my area because there's there's so many carriers, mm-hmm. is that if the numbers are, are good to them as far as uh, the ETAs of delivery and pickup are in the window, then then they keep it to a certain pool. Uh, and as the numbers start maybe uh, not being on time, they need to start adding some more. Because, uh, again, it's all based on a rating system. So I think when certain people start to fall off for whatever reason, they start adding more. That's the only guess I can think of, really. But uh, I'm not yeah. sure exactly why that is. Just sitting here thinking about that, it creates loyalty to Ready. So if me and Ty are the only two guys, and, and me, me, Ty, and Jay are us, five here on this conference or, or the only five that, that they're using for this lane and they're giving us and they're keeping us fed every day, then we rely on them. They know that they've yep. got a whole slew of carriers waiting in the, in the back. Well, I, yes, you're totally right, Ty, and I feel the same thing. I'm not going to mention who what carrier it is, but this is one carrier who I feel they'll call me directly and say, listen, I, we have this. Can you do it? And when can you do it? And I'll tell them straight out, yes or no, with a with a good explanation why I can't, uh, just so they can see how my my work schedule is or my schedule is. And I'll tell them, listen, uh, I can't do it until Friday at the at the earliest. Uh, try to sell it till then. Let's say today's Tuesday when they call me. Try to sell it till then. If you can't sell me, call me Friday, and I'll help you out. And I felt by being very as transparent as I possibly could with this carrier. They call me more, more, I say probably 80% of the work I get from them is, is, uh, by them calling me saying, listen, I have this in area. Are you interested? I'm like, all right, sure. I can, I can do it now. And boom. And so I, I agree with you, Ty. I think that there is a little bit of uh, maybe loyalty in it. Um, but again, I think that also, it's not because they like me because I have a sweet voice. I think it's because my numbers are consistent well, on sure. what I can and can't do and, and my transparency. Transparency in this industry, especially in the used car market, uh, with Ready and, and Cars Drive and United Road, is, is to be as transparent. Whether whether you if it is because you woke up late in the morning and who knows, you just didn't feel right that morning. But if you're straight up and honest with them, they'll respect you for it and they'll, and they'll see that okay, you know, uh, it is what it is. Let's move forward. Uh, again, as long as you, you're you're keeping a good track record with your with your uh, ETAs. Um, Performance based. Yeah, but uh, uh, again, to me, uh, I, I have felt that tie. I agree with Ty. Derek, that I'm sorry. That there is. No, go ahead. Derek, you were saying that maybe there's a shortage of of new car haulers. Are there too many used car haulers? I don't think so. I don't think there's too many. Well, if people are getting cut out of plus Ty, wouldn't you well, say? I think, I think Ready is creating. They, they're they creating a supply and demand right there for themselves within a lane to say uh, it's it's a relationship-based 
um, well, it's just a relationship. So if I'm giving you work every day, Jay, you're going to be loyal to me. You're not going to go haul for Ty. You're going to be loyal to, to the work that I'm, you're not going to go look for your cheese somewhere else. You're going to stay loyal to, to where you're getting your cheese, right? Right. And within that, like Ty, we know that rather than trying to have to live off the load board, it's better to try and go get your customers direct. But if in the future more of these auctions are taken from brick and mortar, put online, it's more of a direct relationship. Those direct relationships are directed to preferred networks. It's going to be musical chairs, isn't it? I mean, you're going to have haulers that are having a harder time locking up a customer, right? Um, locking up a customer? Well, securing a contract. You know, you're, you're a new well, car hauler. Current. You're trying to drum up business. Yeah. What I, th I think, Jay, is, and Derek, you kind of tip, tapped on this, and I didn't even think about it till you said it, but you said you were around, what, who was before UPS with Cox, Mannheim? UPS came in ready, and there was two before. Was I remember awesome. both those names. Like you said. Auction Transport and RSA, Remarketing yeah. Solutions, something like yeah. that. And I remember yeah, whenever awesome. UPS came into Mannheim in Kansas City, I thought, oh, gosh, the world is coming to an end. I'm done. This is UPS. Yeah. And the, the cool part is that I lived through this. And I know Derek lived through it. We've been doing it long enough. By the way, Derek, do you know our story's really similar? Really? <laughs> <laughs> really is. <laughs> I started with a one ton and a three car too. <laughs> anyway, uh, my point is, is that the whoever comes in to try to fix the problem that we're all talking about, it, it can't happen. It just it can't. I don't. I don't even think technology can fix it. There's too many car dealers doing too many different things and too many little carrier guys running around doing their own thing. So what's going to happen? The car dealers want their stuff now. So, you know, I'm always talking about circles. So if it's in a 200, 300 mile circle, there's really no reason that guy can't have 30, 40 cars in two, three days, right? So they're going and buying these big chunks. And if they're going to put them on the load board, the car dealer is going to last about three days max before he he's done. He won't put up with that. And so that comes back to the guys like Derek, the guys like me, Ron, Candy, I mean, all the people we coach, all the people in this ATI group. That's where it comes back to, if I have that relationship and I give you the service you want at a price that's reasonable and fair, nobody's gonna come in and take over the deal. It just won't happen. They might for a little while, but if I'm the guy that provides the service and you got a problem, you call me and I answer my phone and I take care of it and there's no crap in the middle, dude, good luck. Performance based. Huh? Performance. You get what you need. Yeah. Everybody's getting what they need. I don't know. It could work. It's it's kind of been frustrating though, trying to sort my way through it and coach. To build a network. I think the I, network part's easy. It's just a matter of putting it in place. Well, and, and it might be like ePod where it, this all might be a little too early for the industry yet. I think yeah. we're getting closer. I definitely think it's, it's coming. Yeah. I mean, and that's how you can tell because you start having conversations like this and amongst other people within the industry. And that's how ePod, you know, came about. People started talking about, well, actually they were talking about for 10 or 15 years before it ever came about. But Candy said car hauling dictionary earlier. <laughs> I thought about that too. No, you said it. I read in the live chat. Yeah, no, when Ron was talking earlier, that's what I was thinking Ron about. Ron was saying that too? Wow. No. Car hauling dictionary? Why is there not a car hauling dictionary? <laughs> that may, may be part of this platform, you know, that might be the circle of calling of life. The car hauler dictionary. Like like a Wikipedia. Yeah, for car haulers. For car haulers. Is that is that your third or fourth spot on the trailer though? That's that's probably why there's not a dictionary, because you could end up in a fight in the transport parking lot just trying to decide if you put it on number three or did you put it on number five? <laughs> <laughs> Which chains. 
What do you mean you're using chains? Are you serious? Fight. It's big. <laughs> High and heavy. Yeah. It's good. Where do you go uh, one to thing access? I want to throw out there if you guys don't mind. What's that, Ron? Uh, one thing I want to throw out there if you guys don't mind yeah. is uh, something that I've noticed that these boards have uh, kind of created. This is kind of uh, writing on the comment that, that uh, Ty was just talking about. Um, about the the the, uh, the directness to, you know, with the dealers and getting the, the work, I feel like these boards have now um, created more avenues for transporters to use to get work instead of waiting around for dealers to be ready. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it has it has almost I think later down the road these dealers are are going to see that that they're going to have to use these boards to move their stuff because nobody's waiting around for them anymore, especially if their work or their freight is not something that a carrier can count on daily or weekly. You know, if, 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 if transporters are now uh, in today's day waiting for a dealer to be ready uh, every other week, they're going to they have other avenues to, to get other work now and, and be uh, and still and keep moving. And I feel like that's it's opening it up more and more and more uh, for carriers uh to have a, a other work and that loyalty that was there before between like you know the directors with the dealers especially because now also they've uh manheim already have given the option of letting the dealers post this stuff on these boards um it, it, it's it's opening up uh i i, I again I, that's how I feel it's been going on and it's been going forward how do you guys feel about that i want to say this well if the data exists and because I know I've this has happened to me. I've booked a load with a carrier. We're clearly on your route, and yet you posted a car on our route that we do with you, and you posted it to the load board. Why? Why didn't you just assign it to us? How did if the data exists? How did you not know that you could just send it over to us? Why did I have to see it posted on the load board? And call to book it. Why not just send it over? How does the data for that not exist? I don't think their systems are probably integrated to do that just yet. You know, you look at how, I don't know, you say ready logistics. All I remember was RAT. But um, how they how they changed their system over the years to um, make it more the ease from the auctions, you know already having populated VINs and information. So, so I did, think it's just part of the growth. Did you know that Convoy, the company called Convoy in freight trucking, is doing that? Is doing which part? For freight haulers, they're mm -hmm. now doing automated freight dispatching. I've been seeing a lot. I didn't know they were doing it, that name. I've been, I just it's started Convoy. looking at it more. Yeah, and so somebody the Uber Freight. So, exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Now, does it does it need to be Uber and Amazon to do this or can it be somebody actually from inside our industry? Inside. Why does it need to be an outsider with a billion dollars? I don't get that. Probably the technology, the, the the monetary to back the technology to integrate those different systems. And just like he said, to gather that intel and information. Does anybody know a company with that kind of resources? I got like $37, you know. So if we know of a company with the data and the money and the resources, are they going to do that? I Maybe think, man, I, don't I don't think they are. They're not. I think somebody's doing it. Who's doing it? The auction. I just think somebody's doing it. The auction. <laughs> There's a horror movie. Have you guys seen the new horror movie? It's called The Auction. The Auction. The auction. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Well, that was good. Yeah, it's a question. That's the po. That's the pending question. Who's gonna do that? Because I think it's a CIJ, if we don't need 
another ELD solution. We got 200. How about a new technology that we don't have that will help the carrier keep the money and the power because they're the ones doing the bulk of the work? Yeah, the pro the problem there, Jay, is is that when 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 I was in in business, you know, I had the the faulty belief that um, I had this big nut over my head, right? Okay, it was a truck payment, it right? Was and those things didn't change; right. they were constant every day. Um, there was a daily cost associated with that. So if I saw a load out there that paid, you know, it was really cheap freight, but in my mind, I was thinking, okay, I could lose a thousand dollars or I could run this load, which is cheap, very cheap freight, but I'm only losing $500 now because it's going to pay me $500 to run this load. I think that right there, is what holds this whole industry back on the used car side is because too many i've talked to so many truck drivers every day that have that car haulers that have that same mentality that man don't, at least i won't lose a thousand i'll lose only five hundred dollars don't call mm -hmm. cheap freight you're, you're dying a slow death is all that chasing, chasing money chasing money yeah that's why derek we need we talked to, well, I sent you that message about freight waves, or I Facebooked it. I don't remember, right? Talking about a digital dashboard of information and data. Yes. Right. And there should be like a red line of death at the bottom. <laughs> okay? If you go below this rate, you we know, will deactivate your numbers. Right. You will, <laughs> you are murdering yourself. Don't do it. And if that's where you're at, then it's time for a new strategy. Yeah. Yep. Go find you some new customers. Go find you another place to get your cheese. <laughs> that's right. Go find some new cheese. That's right. Jay, I think that's why they started putting more um, stipulations on MC numbers and you know, the different things you could do with your MC numbers is to kind of help curb the inexperienced um, logistics or not just car carrier, but the truck driver or company, small fleet maybe, but the ones who were taking advantage of of everything we're talking about, you know, the fact that it's not uniform or unified and messing it up for the ones who operate in their little in the legal manner oh well yeah i mean when you open up and i'm i'm typing right now because we've got rick james is asking for ctsbusinesscoaching.com hey. that is where you can listen you're welcome to go to the facebook groups and get all the drama you want or you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching customized with your personal information on a phone call and, and within one hour figure out, am I headed in the right direction or the wrong direction? Maybe we should do a follow-up session, but Ty, I know, I saw you on the phone today. In a five, just in five minutes, I could tell whoever was on the other line really hadn't done a lot of homework. Am I right? Is that a good way of saying that? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> and, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, don't even get me started, man. It's luckily, luckily, Ty had about 15 or 20 calls today, and so he doesn't know which one yeah. right. you're referring to. Oh, my goodness. It's so true. It's good, though. And I really do care about this business. I care about the people. And as a matter of fact, cool story. Here's a good, good example. Yeah. Guy calls. <clears throat> It's not going too good for him. He's got a one ton and three car. The dot the the diesel one tons in the shop and he still needs to keep going, so he bought a gas truck, right? So he's gone and, and he needs some help. And so okay, we sit down, we start going through numbers. And as we start going through numbers, 
we get to the bottom and it's it's one of these moments where i don't say anything <laughs> the guy's like oh beep you got one of those beep buttons jay <laughs> no oh, i need beep. one yeah well yeah. <clears throat> so anyway as we talked about and you're right it is a custom deal and this is what was really cool as we talked we found ways for him to still be in the business, but not do what he's doing and regroup. So we, we tighten the circle. We don't, he doesn't go outside of this anymore. He goes to the auction, he pulls cars, he, you know, I mean, and there's so much shit. Nobody likes to pull cars, including me. I'm pulling cars every day. I can't stand it, but I'm learning something as I do it. I'm talking to people, I'm meeting people. I'm establishing a network that I know is I can count on that guy and I can't count on that guy. <clears throat> and so as we get in here and we start talking to these guys, there's, it's like here, here's some easy, easy things. If you're not in this business and you want to get in it, rule number one, don't even think about it unless you got six months cash stashed. That's the new rule. Don't even think about it. And that six months is what it costs you to live one month times six. Do not get in this business if you don't have money saved up, please. That's rule number one. Right, and that is because of? Man. Truck, trailer, insurance, maintenance, trailer, tolls, DOT. Tires, real yeah. I mean, we start, golly, I mean, just. It, that know, doesn't like, even include the knowledge. That's yeah. just physical cost. Yeah. Yeah, it's a. It, I love the business, and I tell people this all the time. It's probably been the most rewarding business I've, I, I know. Of course, I've done it twenty years. What else do I know? But it is also. It's it's the probably it's it's hard. And Derek, Derek nailed it. You know, you're sitting here looking at a truck payment, insurance, my electric bill, my house payment, and my car payment. Uh, I need to find a load now. And what happens? That's where it starts right there just it spirals downhill so fast Derek you've done it I've done it we've all done it and we learned a good lesson do yep. not chase money stop <laughs> Ty, Ty do you yeah. also give them a number uh, to reach for as far as what they should be grossing weekly uh, to be able to sustain it yeah yeah we do the three car guy what we're tar we're shooting anywhere between three to five within that 50 mile radius. And the truth is, Ron, it is more work. That is true. And two, uh, by the way, Ron, I've actually, going, uh, you may not have heard from this guy yet, but I'm referring a guy to you. He's, huh? he's up in your area and I know you know these load boards. So you're gonna be getting some referrals. <laughs> sure, <laughs> no problem, I appreciate it. You're part of the starter kit now, Ron. <laughs> I appreciate it. Exactly. But yeah, anything I can, anything I can do to help. But uh, I, also for the nine car holders, um, what's a good average that uh, you put out there for them to, to, to reach for? Uh, I think, you know, it, it depends on which way you're going. I, I try to say make it make 7,500 your goal for the week. Right. I think that's it's doable. Of course, we all know in a nine car stinger, man, you can crank out 14 grand in two days. You know, I mean, it's it's doable. But if a guy's just trying to work the numbers and, you know, that's that's an important part of this is know your numbers. I mean, you have to know them. And I, I'm, I'm not a number guy. I don't like them, but I like it when I'm doing this because yep. it'll tell you stop. And I, I was going to say that, too, is that through this process, of sharing information and learning more is that when I was dispatching cars, we were just talking about how much money we thought we needed to make. We had no idea. We did never included your own salary, which would not only cover your personal expenses, but you are here to try to make a profit. Yeah. Three cars starting out. I mean, again, it's it's a great way to get into the business. It's a very important part of the ecosystem. We need three car guys. It's I think so. Setting up a strategy to make sure you're here 13 months. What I'm starting to see, and if anybody can come up with a statistic, I don't know, but I'm seeing the life expectancy of a one ton and a three car person is six to 12 months, and they're gone. Is that two insurance policies? <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah. What are you and talking about, Candy? Tell us. 
That's how long they last, you know. You can borrow the money and use your savings to get through that first insurance quote, get that policy. That second one is just make or break. Yeah. Nobody's loaning any more money. No. So, anyway, mm. it's been good. And I think, uh, you know, I'm like I said, I'm at an auction pretty much every day. And it's. it's and that's why we're. I mean, I know we're, we've kind of, we're at this low, like, oh, man. But you know what? It's important to talk about this stuff. That's where this is not like, this isn't the easy peasy show. This is, there's just a lot of information, and, and I, it's not all good. But it has to be talked about. This is a lot of money at stake. You're putting up a lot of money getting into this business. And we're meeting people every single day that want to get in yeah. and but what we don't do is we don't get calls from the people getting out every single day <laughs> that would be cool hey jay yeah i just got out great show <laughs> you know? i've got a question for ty yeah what information uh i don't know if you have a check sheet but for new guys new carriers what information would they need to gather and have ready to be able to have a a successful um, meeting or you know set up with you? Like, what information do they need to have on hand to be able to get answers to their questions or to have answers for those questions that you're going to ask them? Mm, I don't know. I've got. I've had several coaching sessions, quite a few actually, where they'll send me a list of questions that they want to at attack, approach, whatever you want to call it. And um, I, it's usually all the same. You know, what kind of equipment do I need? Do I need a three car Kaufman or do I need a five car Wally Mo? You know, or do the truck and trailer? So it's, it's there's not a right answer to the question, Candy, because everybody's chasing something from what I've been, you know, coaching people. I listen and I listen and I ask stupid questions and the stupid questions are for a reason because there's usually something in the background pushing this idea. Mm -hmm. It's usually hard to find it. So the initial, basically everybody's, can I make money? All right. That's the first one. Can I make money? And I tell everybody don't plan on making money the first year. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you what, do, great, but don't. What if they already have their equipment, though, those guys, the ones that have their equipment and just got started kind of off a dollar in a dream, but are looking to get past, you know, this third, fourth month now? That's a good one, because here's what I get on that one. This is every, every single, and I do this on purpose. So if anybody out there listening wants to call and schedule a coaching appointment with me, here's, here's what I'll ask you. Where do you plan on getting your cars, right? So here's the number one answer, a load board, a dispatcher, or a broker. Those are always the answers. So I'm starting to think I'm crazy, right? Because I'm, I'm the only one saying, well, can we just go get our own customers? How about that? No, I want a dispatcher, a load board, and a broker. Okay, that's cool. Or I'm just gonna do it just to get my business going, right? And again, I mean, okay. And Ron, Ron broke the mold here. How long you been doing it, Ron? I've been doing this for 20 years. No, since you oh, got the on your own, yeah, and your board. Uh, I've been doing this for yeah, about five or six, five years. Since, five years. Uh, yeah. Since yeah, and just you and your truck, and you're doing load boards, right? Yeah, I do load boards. To me, they're they're the best thing since since the wheel. Like I said before. Yeah. I love them. You want to add another truck to your fleet, Ron? <laughs> I, I I would love to. It's just sometimes a headache uh, makes me think twice about it. But yeah, yeah. What what's the but, headache, for, Ron? Uh, the like I'm sure Derek can uh, can agree to this. The everywhere from the driver to the maintenance to the uh, safety regulations uh, to all those things that you require to have a uh, even a small fleet is is a task in itself. Uh, so sometimes. Uh, that weekly pressure of complying with all that, you got to step back and say, am I making enough to put up with all this? Uh, and that's, uh, like you said before, you got to know when to 
when to fold them. You got to know when to stop bleeding. So yeah. to me, uh, I've liked to stay small for me, especially at this point in my life, because yeah. um, of that that stress factor. So let me ask uh, you a also, question: Can you, uh -huh. if you had another truck, Stinger nine car, Peterbilt fifty three, let's see seventy five oh nine, and a driver, a good driver that didn't give you any problems, can you keep two trucks busy off your load board system? Well, let, let me tell you this: This is something that uh, I do that I don't think I've mentioned before. I actually keep about three trucks busy from what I do. Um, I don't know if I can go into specifics of how I do it. It's nothing wrong with the way I do it, um, but it's not from my board. I help them build their board, okay? Um, and it's because of the work that I do and how I do it. I give them an outline and I build their board for them, where then after a while, it, they can kind of do it on their own, but they like it better when I do it for them. So I'll kind of continue to do it. Um, but with the work of just getting off the, these boards, I can keep weekly, and I have been since for I, I, at least four months now, uh, consistently keep three trucks running. And we're talking about uh, loads uh, uh, up and back. You're talking loaded both ways, 90% uh, of the time. Hmm. Yeah, we need to put you in the start. I was just say, Ron, you're an innovator, and you're. Uh, yeah, it's impressive. It's great that you're here. I need to come. And I, meet. I appreciate it, guys, but also I put this out there. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not nothing that anybody else can't do. They just have to know how to read what's out there. That's why uh, just how Derek cool. had said before, the data, the data, okay. the data. I wanted to ask this. Here's a question. How do you get uh -huh. a carrier list of auto transporters in the United States? Anybody? Online. Okay, where? Do you just uh, Mobile carrier. Over. Where do you do? Over in the Safer, somewhere over. Go Is to Safer? Quint? And can safer you just or... export? Can I export that list into a PDF? I don't know about that part. Oh, well, I want that list. How do I get that list? Start with A and end with Z. Just copy and paste. Let's get it next week on next week's show, Jay. Anybody know how to get that list? It should be some dispatchers on here that know, because a lot of the dispatchers. Ask the dispatcher. Can... It goes back to the dispatchers. Well, Man, the dispa dispatchers. It's a lot of dispatchers, independent up. dispatchers, who um, get their information from new entry carriers online. No, I don't. I don't think dispatchers know how to get. I've had dispatchers contacting me asking me how to get carriers. Well, it it's a couple, they... and they might be mad at me, so I'm going to shut up. It's oh. some dispatchers. Oh. Know. <laughs> as soon as somebody wants you to stop talking, you are welcome on my show. <laughs> because I am, I am, I am Mister Not Supposed to Be Talking About This. Okay. Oh yes, that is, definitely. That's who I am. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be talking about this, and yet here I am. In you know, your will of, never work. People are scared. They are scared, aren't they? They're scared of you. You're doing something right. Oh, well. All right. Hey, I thought you were Mr. It will never work. That'll never work. <laughs> um, uh, I make a lot of phone calls. I've made a lot of phone calls. I am Mr. Why can't we do this? Why not? I, I ask the questions. I tell Kimberly this. I'm the guy that asks the questions that I remember even in grade school. I'm asking questions and the rest of the class is like, God, why didn't he shut up? <laughs> and I'm asking these crazy questions. Like, I ask the English teacher, why, you know, why do you put the comma before the yes, but... You know, uh, I mean, the apostrophe before the S. Here's a question for you. In a quotation, why is the comma inside the quotation? I didn't say comma. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a crazy question. But you translate that to auto transport, and I'm asking, is there a list of carriers? I don't think you can get that list. So, I mean, there are ways to use technology to get your hands on that list. Does anybody need that list might be another question. 
Dude, well, that's the whole thing. I mean, I know there is a way that you can get a list by just uh, going through, uh, what is it, DOT? Uh, but you don't know exactly what they carry unless, I guess, you do a, a specific, you know, call to each carrier to ask what they actually move, uh, mm-hmm. unless there is. When you file for your for your motor carrier number, you, you and I think it's your what is it your MC when you yeah. file for, for your MC what's the number. what's the one hundred and fifty thing that we used to have to file every year MCS one hundred and fifty or something like yeah. that. Oh, the uh, twenty two ninety. Are you talking about twenty two ninety? No, no uh, that's the heavy uh, use. Um, yeah, heavy use, right? I think so it long. is MCS one hundred and fifty. You have to identify what what type of freight or what you're hauling, and so. Um, like we were always a, a motor carry, uh, no, not a motor carry. We hauled automobiles or trans transported car. There was some type of variant in there that we checked as a car haul company. Motor vehicles. It says right, unsafer. Right. Well, when you apply, you check the motor vehicles. Yeah. Box and that, and therefore by checking that box, you should end up in the database. But it seems to me people are work MCS one hundred and fifty. MCS one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paul. But it seems like you, some people have worked very hard to get a hold of that list, and it wasn't. You know, it's not like you could just hit, you know, auto carrier list and hit right. Google. But just as I mean, here we are. We're talking about these fragmented pieces. If you're a new car hauler and you're like, you know, okay, what ELD do I get? I mean, what what needs to, you know, what are the parts that I need? Mm-hmm. Where do I get loads? What car hauling software do I use? Do I need car hauling software? What brokers do I contact and trust? Where do I go for insurance, truck, trailer? So many fragmented pieces. And uh, it's just it's it's just like shipping a car. You Google and you throw a dart. So, okay. I love this show. <laughs> well, it's, thank you. I do too. I love you. You're unveiling uh, all the secrets, you know, all the for saying that. out there of trying thank to. You. So, I appreciate that. I, I do. I love I love this debate. I love talking about this and I hope that, you know, I like what we were talking about aha uh-huh, earlier and had a great conversation with guy. I look forward to, man, let's see if we can bring this to other locations, keep expanding, bringing people in, getting more information, more experts, interviews. Listen, if you know someone that should be on this show, uh, another guest, another company, service, or uh, anyone with information, let them know. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. And I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight. Derek from Car Delivery Network for being my interview segment, staying on for the live panel. We've got Ty from CTS. If you need transport business coaching, contact Ty. Go to ctsbusinesscoaching.com. His phone number's up there. You can give him a call. Ron, you've got a lot of information you keep throwing down. We're going to be having you back on the show. And that goes for YouTube, Candy. I appreciate you, Jay. You guys are part of the network, and uh, I really look forward to having you back on the show and uh i mean you guys ask good questions and provide good info and i really appreciate that i couldn't do that without you guys so thank you for being a part of the show no thank you hey, thank you Jay. you guys hey, have yeah, a great night i have, night. I have uh, candy's information will you send me ron's yes contact information do me a favor and this goes for anybody if you're watching and you want to get a hold of anybody that's here or somebody else through the network, send me an email. Derek, will you send me an email? Autotransportintel at gmail.com. Let me know whose contact information you need. Yeah. And Derek, you also, you can be contacted if somebody wants to know more about Car Delivery Network. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we have an office, uh, office. What's the phone uh, number? What was that office phone number, Derek? 682. 682. 323. Eight zero seven two. Okay, or you can is... send an email to support at cardeliverynetwork.com. And if you if you send that email into to support at cardeliverynetwork.com, be sure and say that you heard about us on this show. Um, 
and you'll be dealing with John. He's our he's our tech support guy here. He's a great guy. He loves the industry as well. So awesome. Okay, yeah. Support at cardeliverynetwork.com. I got it in the live chat. Got the phone number 682-323-8072. If you have questions for Car Delivery Network, give them a call. Send them an email. Great job there, Derek. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah, Derek, thanks for coming on. That was really awesome. I appreciate it. I love what you guys are doing. Cool. Hey, guys, and thanks for your patience with my technical difficulties. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Yeah. Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, have a good night. Take care. Uh, and I'm going to go back to, let's see here. Let me get this as we wrap that up. Go back to this camera, that camera. Okay. Got custom and the meeting. And we're back over here to, oh, no, that's my video. I can't see it. Oh man, where'd my video go? Let's see if I can close this. All right, <laughs> close that. This has been a crazy show. Oh man, there's stuff all over the place. Let's do this. All right, I'm gonna go back to guys. I can't even figure out where my video is at. So listen, I'm gonna close this show out. Can't even see me. My video's gone, and uh, and I'm gonna close it up for tonight. So listen, you guys, I'm gonna start up the car hauler. <laughs> you need to see a screen and a and a thumbnail and some images. Where is Jay? We're gonna, you know what? We're gonna rename this show right now. Here, let's do this. Let's call this. Where is Jay? It's the Where is Jay show. Listen, you guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight on Auto Transport Intel. I'm going to fire up the car hauler. I'll see you guys next week, next Tuesday night. I'm always here to talk about all things car hauling. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. <laughs>